Now? Yeah. Yeah, John sort of screwed us up here because he yeah, he told us that the stream is up and that our, our mics are okay. on. Thanks, Ghosty, for uh, for saving us. Anyway, I guess I guess we'll start from the beginning. Hello, tennis fans. Uh, we will be talking. Oh, sorry. Is this? I guess no. This shouldn't be the. Ah, Come on. How do I change the scene? Is the question. I don't know. Uh, I changed it to logo, I think. Okay, we should be fine now. Uh, yeah, anyway, we talked about, uh, you know, being excited for this day. Uh, we're not gonna, we're gonna have a stream in two parts today. Uh, one of them is gonna be at, uh, yeah, right now, starting right now, uh, talking about some of the matches that are gonna be happening at in the first time slot. Then we'll sort of go from here, we'll see what's gonna happen. But uh, we, the plan is to mostly be focused on uh, Sabalenka Rogers. And then we'll definitely be back at the end of the day. Um, thank yeah 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 I yeah, can hear you now yeah I check I checked on 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 on, on headphones that we can we can be heard now uh, sorry for that and then we're gonna be back definitely for Kokinakis Mari mm -hmm. uh, it's possible that uh, someone else will join us for that as well uh, possibly Jack as well who as, as, as you heard last time is a crazy Mari fanatic well he's not but you know. Uh, he is a big fan, and uh, and he uh, has some other stuff to do. I think he said, but he will be sort of dipping in and out. Uh, at the at, that's at the end of the day, of course, because Kokinakis Mare is in the um, is in the last spot on Margaret Court Arena. Mm -hmm. uh, Sabalenka in two six three six four is what goes is is uh, mm -hmm. uh, predicting. I'm gonna touch on it in a while. Just will tell you at first that at one a.m. we've got five singles matches starting. Uh, Davidovic Fokina Paul on court number seven, Shardy Evans on court number three, and the uh, three women's matches on the show courts. So Volinets Kudermetova, Townsend Alexandrova, and Sabalenka Rogers. I've already asked Mario this question, but since the mics were off, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do that again. And Mario, what are you most excited on uh, for, especially in that in that first uh, time slot? Yeah, I was saying that the um, the match that we're going to have on Rod Laver Arena can be can be a good match because Rogers is able to play um, a very good uh, very good tennis and uh, even if yeah I I can agree with uh, what Goss said um, I think that Sabalenka is playing uh, very well lately and so uh, I think she she's going to be able to to manage this this test against Shelby Rogers but definitely I don't know okay I I I, I turned to okay yeah. um and so yeah I was saying uh, I think that it's gonna be still a good test for her to to see uh, how ready she is to to play well even if even in in probably closer closer matches in later stages of these tournaments is uh, a lot of uh, um, tennis fans and journalists and everyone sees Sab um, Sabalenka as uh, probably a top two three favorite for uh, winning the the whole thing the title in this Australian Open. Uh, I have on my screen. Um, Davidovich Fokina against Tommy Paul, um, and I'm expecting a, a very close battle uh, because, uh, yeah, I was saying that um, probably both uh, both players are a bit used to to having some ups and downs in their matches and playing some good tennis at times, but and, uh, and then probably uh, they level. Um, sometimes it's a little bit off, and so I'm not expecting a, a straight set match, uh, match, but I can be wrong. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun match. And yeah, I was also talking about Kudermetova because uh, with Kazatkina out, uh, she's uh, the biggest seed of uh, in her in her section of the draw to to try to make the, the quarterfinals. Um, that would have been another uh, another good result uh, in Kudermetova last part of of her career. Um, she's a pretty solid player. Uh, it's unusual to see her going out with uh, uh, some players she 
um, she's set to beat. Um, yeah, so I think that probably she she's a nice uh, um, a nice chance to try to to make a, a very good result in this Australian Open. And the reason why Rogers against Sabalenka is you know, considered to be exciting is because the, the American has a bit of a reputation of being a giant killer. I think that mostly comes from two matches and that's uh, the, the party upset at the US Open 2021 in round three, which, yeah, I think, yeah, it has to be the party's last match in New York uh, before retiring. And also uh, that one against Halep at the 2017 Australian Open here. But I do, I do agree that it's, you know, Sabalenka is probably playing too well right now for for that to matter. Uh, but still, you know, Rogers has on many occasions. Also, she beat Serena Williams at Lexington 2020, uh, which uh, which was another one of her top ten wins. She her top ten record is seven and seventeen, uh, you know, record against the top ten. But at the slams, I so think bad. it's three and eight. Yeah, I mean, for for a player of her stature, I think it's I think it's very solid. Uh, we're going to have another one of these matches with uh, Lynette Contavate, I guess, uh, soon, soon mm -hmm. because Lynette also, in, like in the past couple of seasons, has made three top ten uh, up wins at slams, I think, or, or, or in the past three seasons. Can't remember when she beats Svitolina at Wimbledon. Uh, but of course, Contavate is not in the top ten right at, at the moment. Last meeting has been really close. Uh, between Sabalenka and Rogers. Yeah, Cincinnati 2022. Sabalenka won 6-7, 6-4. So, yeah, uh, Sabalenka is up to love in the head-to-head, -head, but uh, the last meeting uh, on, on an American hardcore has been re really, really close. Yeah, and Ghosty also says, any chance Rybakina is a dark horse? Two, two straight wins, little press. She's very efficient and quiet. That can sometimes mean danger. That's how she progressed through the draw at Wimbledon, right? Uh, I remember I was... Uh, I was like at a at a pretty like uh, at a Polish Europe show um, during the I think it was like during the third round of Wimbledon, and we are just you know just uh, talking of course about Świątek losing to Cornet and then about some other things of the in the women's draw, and I remember I was shocked at how no one was talking about Rybakina <laughs> because well yeah you know she she's got that massive serve she plays very flat she can uh, she can take the ball early so she seemed like a very good candidate to to go deep at Wimbledon initially I remember that uh, you know. Uh, when I saw the draw, I was afraid that Świątek was going to lose to her in the quarterfinals. Of course, she didn't get, she didn't get that uh, far even. Uh, but yeah, this this is this is pretty similar. I think Rybakina, even though she got that Wimbledon title, is definitely flying a bit under the radar. Uh, we've watched um, both matches from Collins, I believe, against Kalinskaya, and um, of course, yesterday against Muhova. Uh, you know, they weren't clean. They definitely weren't as clean as as Rybakina's wins. Uh, especially yesterday against uh, Kaya Yuvan, of course, uh, the, the Kazakh uh, did uh, very well. Uh, just three, uh, just three games lost, if I remember correctly. And, of, and Yuvan is, uh, uh, you know, a prospect herself, so uh, that's quite a win. And yeah, it, it's it, it's possible, although you still, I guess, even though uh, you know, even if, even though Collins has had two rough battles, I think it's it's still going to be close between them. Uh, but yeah, once she gets through that, I think. Uh, it's not, um, you know, Elena Rybakina might end up being a one-time major champion, who knows, but she's going to fret it to, to win a couple of these events, probably. Uh, of course, she's not getting that much traction uh, for various reasons, uh, which is, you know, kind of wrong, uh, because she should be. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, well, so the mm -hmm. ranking, mm, I think that not having the two 2,000 points... Uh, uh, from Wimbledon has, has made a part in in her flying under the radar because uh, regardless of uh, her um, uh, you know her her way of being her behavior her uh, being quiet and all these things uh, if she gets the those points and she suddenly is uh, eight nine in the world ten in the world then you you definitely can't um, can't not not talk about her uh, in these tournaments and so for example we we saw the, uh, the example of Kudermetova she's not a, a major champion of course but um, she's kind of the same um, usually flying under the radars and all these things but having a very very high ranking now uh, 
uh, everyone has to talk about air because you you have air in the draw with the high seed and all these things so i think that um, not having uh, those points has made a huge huge role in ribakina you uh, often flying under the radar in in these tournaments yeah yeah no i absolutely agree that was one of the reasons i i, I thought of when i said various reasons uh hey jane uh there's also um yeah uh, ghosty also said that he was impressed with muhova last night and that it was a great match with collins could have gone the other way very easily yeah absolutely i mean karina muhova has already been a top 20 player in her career of course when healthy she's got every chance of returning there uh, and she was always known for uh, so sort of overperforming at slams right uh, when she when she was f first breaking through to the tour, he had that uh, she had that uh, quarters at Wimbledon, I think, round when she beat mm. Dishkova. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2019, then, I think. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, at, at, at every slam, she was always dangerous. So whenever if she, if she's healthy, she's always going to be that. I think. I'm also watching Jeremy Chardy play Dan Evans, but frankly, not too happy about how it's going so far <laughs> because Chardy's movement is not looking great. Uh, Evans broke in the opening game with a stunning lob. Uh, there, there, there was absolutely nothing that Charlie could do, but uh, it's just looking very sloppy on the first forehand after the serve, especially, which has been, you know, pretty much what uh, Charlie has built his career upon. Of course, uh, Charlie has not played in over a year and a half uh, or something like that, and uh, that's due to the side effects after the COVID vaccine. Uh, definitely the most major case we've had in tennis. And yeah, I did not see uh, even a, even a point from his match against Daniel Lachigalan in the opening round. Uh, but you know, after after such a long while, this was definitely a great win. But uh, if he is moving like I'm seeing so far in the first three games against Evans, then that's going to be. <laughs> I'm not sure how he beat Galan, but but yeah, we'll see. Uh, of course, he's got the big serve to rely on as well. Maybe maybe he, maybe the footwork is going to get slightly more dynamic. Because especially on that on that plus one forehand, that that's, that needs to improve. And I think as against Evans as well, you know, someone who slices the ball so much, he's gonna need some uh, better footwork to to get there. I think Rybakina, yeah, if if she wasn't, uh, you know, if you get her two hundred points, she would have been. Um, there was there was a moment like before the WTA finals when she would have been like fourth or third, if you if you just got her to to two thousand points. Uh, but right now it will be around uh, six, seven, eight. Uh, do you know which one Shardy got? Was it one of the mRNA? I I I'll, 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 I'll check it. Uh, I'm I'm not sure which uh, company. Okay. Uh, now you're talking about something, and I'll try to find it. Um, no, yeah, uh, I was thinking about this Savalenka Rogers matchup, and I genuinely think that the only. Um, way Rogers can make the upset is hoping Savalenka is not playing a good match because I think that um, uh, Sabalenka um, can overpower Rogers a little bit. Rogers is not a great a great mover, a great um, uh, defensive player. Um, I think that they they think about tennis in a bit of a similar way. So um, yeah, I think that if Sambalenka plays her match uh, in a good way, like she did in the first round, um, she's going to win this straight set. But um, yeah, as we we saw in the head-to-head, -head, they had a close meeting in Cincinnati. So if if Sambalenka um, uh, suddenly started playing a bad match, some bad points, definitely Rogers can. Uh, yeah, can can still be there to 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 win some games and then put pressures uh, pressure on Sabalenka's shoulder and then uh, it can be really really difficult for uh, for Arena because yeah she saw her often struggling uh, when she's under pressure and in close matches um, she's kind of the player that when things go her way. In, in a match, she she suddenly becomes the probably the, the strongest player uh, of the one of the two uh, strongest player on on tour in the way she plays. But when uh, the score probably is even uh, for all five all and something like that, she uh, she's one of the most vulnerable top ten players probably. Um, 
so yeah, uh, I think the first games of this match can be really, really important to see how uh, this match can turn out because if Sabalenka uh, manages to, to win these first games and being up in the score, probably she can, she can make this match not so close. Yeah, and Charlie got a Pfizer vaccine, so I believe that is an mRNA uh, one, yeah. Uh, I think it's also the one I got. So yeah, sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's uh, it's just a matter of being lucky. Unfortunately, of course, uh, all um, well, all treatments have can have some side effects. And yeah, as I said, in Shardy is definitely the biggest uh, story like that that we had in tennis. I, in fact, I cannot really think of another one that lasted so long. Um, there was like Dimitrov. I think had a had a month where he was really struggling with with. Uh, uh, yeah, with his fitness after the vaccine, I'm, I'm sure at the at the lower levels there must have been. But uh, you know, Shardy was out of the game for more than a year, uh, which is crazy. Uh, he got the vaccine be between the Olympics and the U.S. Open in 2021. Uh, so, um, uh, so yeah, it it really took him a long while to come back to the courts. And well, at his age, uh, I'm yeah, I even read read some interviews where he said that you know he's not. Uh, excluding retirement because he simply cannot at this stage of his career but he's back uh, played a couple of uh, better points now against Evans maybe maybe it was just uh, at first that his footwork seemed that sloppy he's gonna turn 36 in February yeah in this match um, Tommy Paul has already bro uh, broken twice uh, Davidovich Fokina is three love up um, I'm still not changing my mind. I think that even if he, for example, wins this at 6-1 or something like that, he still um, can win, but in four or in five sets. Um, let's see, Davidovic Fokina is not a consistent player throughout, uh, throughout one single match. Uh, not only throughout one match, but... Uh, um, Oh, so Rogers made a uh, very nice forehand winner to save her first break point. Yeah, there uh, were a couple of, match. of pressure points already in the, the Sabalenka Rogers match at 30 30. Uh, Rogers just, win, you know, just just missed a very simple uh, plus one backhand uh, from the middle of the court, but then she, she was ballsy enough to go for a, for a huge uh, short angle on the forehand on the break point. There is a deuce now, and we'll see. Uh, she apparently blasted an ace, so. Uh, not going away yet. Uh, there's a there's a game point for her. I honestly thought that her records, like the amount of times I've heard Shelby Rogers and even called her as well a giant killer or you know an upset maker. Uh, I thought her records would be like more excellent. I think it's just the Barty win and and the Halep one at the Australian Open as well that sort of stuck with us. And uh, yeah, I thought she might have a slightly better record. That uh, you know, it, it's not really comparable to Kaya Kanepi, for example, who is, uh, of course, like um, yeah, fifty percent against the top ten at the slums. Kanepi is free. Uh, sorry, Rogers is free and eight before this match. Uh, there was a great point with, uh, for uh, Sabalenka as well. She got some nice depth to to force Rogers to slice and then uh, just finish of the finish of the point with the forehand. Yeah, one one interesting thing about this section of the men's draw um, is that uh, we have Davidovic for Kina Paul and then um, Brooks be Root and and if the third round is going to be Paul Root, uh, they have already met three times in Grand Slams: once at the Australian Open, once in Roland Garros, and once in U.S. Open. Uh, so it's yeah, it's. Um, pretty curious to see since they they're still young players and but yeah they still have a who won the a, other two because we all remember the U.S. Open match where um, the, uh, Rude won in five uh, sets. Rude won also both Australian Open okay. and Roland Garros matches. Uh, but uh, five sets also in Roland Garros 2020 and Australian Open 2021 four sets. So yeah, mm, but they already have a, a yeah quite long history in, in Grand Slam matches. Yeah, I was surprised to see uh, you know sort of jumping ahead to uh, Contavet Ninet that it's going to be mm. second. I think at Mar Margaret Court, I was surprised to see that they played seven times uh, and five of them in ITF events between I think 2013 and 15, and then they haven't played for the past three years. But, uh, definitely wasn't expecting seven head-to-head -head meetings there. 
and three three times on grass, by the way, which is which is also kind of fun. They they must have played like the uh, the ITF grass season in in the UK simply and and constantly met because I think it was twice in Nottingham and once in Ilkley. It's like oatmeal with uh, dry toast. There is a blunt combination. I don't see the, uh, the comment above. Uh, what was it related to? Looks mm. being black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not excited for this one. Uh, not gonna lie. Uh, although you know, there, there there are definitely some uh, some people who enjoy Kasparu's game, but they're not. Um, they're dying breed, I think. <laughs> or maybe not the dying breed, like because you know, as he as he gains more traction, there's probably gonna be more of them. But Brooksby Road, yeah, not not my idea of an exciting tennis match, but. We'll see. It could be exciting if there's drama in it, right? Casper uh, Ruud against Thomas Mahaj was very cool, for example, but but that was mostly because of the drama and all the uh, all the excitement coming from the fact that there was a, a close battle, which we which I think we expected, sort of. And also we've got, uh, as we as we mentioned earlier, uh, Volinat Skudermetova and Townsend Alexandrova, and uh, Taylor Townsend is up a break on Ekaterina Alexandrova. Which is a bit of a surprise, I suppose. But uh, well, maybe maybe the fact that you know there there's no servant volley players anymore uh, on the tour, especially on the on the women's side, of course. Uh, maybe that's gonna mess a bit with Alexandrova's head. Although I suspect that you know the, the way that she can blast returns, it's not gonna be easy to approach against her. But it also doesn't seem like Townsend is approaching and everything. She's been at the net five times by now. It's the fifth game she's had to. Uh, she's had two service games, so I don't think she's approaching on on everything. But of course, Thompson is a is a great doubles player. I think in January she's already won like two titles. A great month for her, and maybe in the uh, yeah, maybe she can also do something in the singles at the Australian Open. I think she's here with a wild card for topping the U.S. Open, um, not the U.S. Open, the Australian Open uh, wild card challenge uh, for in the you know in American uh, held by USTA, like Ben Shelton. Damien, are you surprised by this Tommy Paul score four one with a double break upon David Fakina? Did you have Tommy Paul winning or or did you go for the thirty seed? I think I have Paul beating Rood in the third. So Okay, yeah. so there you go. I, I did have Paul beating David Fakina, but I think as Mario said, it's uh, you know, let's not jump to conclusions in a match like this. Right. David Fakina is an extremely um up and down player. Yeah, he lost a set six love, I think, to Bublik. Or did he? No, did he win one? Round. Yeah, he I won think, one. I think that was Bublik losing it, okay. losing the opener, uh, six love, and uh, hitting nineteen unforced errors in that one. Uh, they are dying of. <laughs> Thank goodness, Fukina finally had serve. Yeah, Jane, you we remember your uh, your fan of uh, Alejandro Davidovich Fukina from last from last night. Uh, so hopefully your guy is gonna be is gonna do better soon in that match. I feel like I feel like golf approaches a fair bit. Um, yeah, uh, she can follow up a shot to the net for sure. Of course, she has excellent double, ex excellent uh, uh, hands. She she's a fantastic doubles player. She had the, the world number one there uh, last year. Uh, I'm not sure if she's still still world number one in doubles though. Uh, Karin Garcia, of course, is still uh, you know uh, maintaining a fair bit of uh, servant volleys in her game as well. But I think she, she you know she mostly plays it like after the, the first stroke in the rally. But of course, fantastic doubles pedigree there <clears throat> as well. Although I would struggle to find someone like Taylor Townsend, though um, probably not many players like that left. And she's up a double break on on Alexandrova. Really? Uh, that would be one of one of the biggest upsets so far, probably at the U.S. Open, if she, uh, uh, U.S. Open, Australian Open, if that's <laughs> at least on the women's side. Um, Shelby Rogers held um, for what it's worth. She was under a bit of pressure on her serve, so she's won game all. Uh, Tommy Paul is comfortably up four one and thirty love against Davidovich Fakina. If anything happens there, uh, crazy if you like. I uh, Davidovich Fakina come back in that set. I will let you know. Um, she, Jane, is suggesting that Davidovich Fakina has a problem. I know that he's, I saw him just speaking with the umpire, but I don't know what it was about. So maybe uh, you guys in the live chat, if you have some volume on that. I thought he just seemed upset with something, but um, maybe he's upset with his uh, body failing on him or it might be something else. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, back to Sabalenka here. I have her beating Shelby Rogers, albeit she's just dumped a forehand into the net. 
So she's at 30 all on her own serve. Uh, but that is on serve at the moment, one game all. Uh, Tommy Paul just doing some flash work with his racket there as he tosses it up in the air, spins it around, grabs hold of it and gets ready to receive from Davidic Fakina because it's 1-5. Davidic Fakina serving to stay in the first set. I will just take us around some of the grounds. I know that Damien touched on it. And if you are wondering where is Mario right now, he is knee-deep in pasta uh, as he... Uh, 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 gorges on that. I will take you around to some of the ma matches elsewhere. So let's have a quick look at some of those results. Let's have a quick look at the breakpoint. Right oh, now, thank Sabalenka you. wasted another plus one forehand. Uh, this thank time you. long though. And Rogers has a slight advantage, but probably not any anymore in that rally. Uh -oh. Well, she does it now after that short ball from, from Arena. Oh, nice one, Arena Sabalenka. That was weird though. Like, it was weird. She let it did she let it fly past her? Yeah, without even stretching out her racket. Yeah, Juice. Rogers had a very clear chance to to get to that vol to get to that pass. Uh, of course, the volley wasn't perfect, but she was still covering the net pretty well. Yeah, I'm not sure what what was. She just maybe wasn't her. anticipating it. Yeah, no. I mean, it does not seem like it was you know out of reach. Mm. Andy Murray <laughs> against uh, Matteo Berrettini would have gotten it. <laughs> Nice first serve there for Sabalenka. So she's saved that break point and now she's up. Uh, she has an advantage to her favor. So she has a game point. Uh, Tommy Paul is just two sets two sets away. Well, he is two sets away or maybe even three actually. But he's two points away from uh, winning the first set because he's 30 all on the uh, Tommy Paul serve. Uh, Dan Evans remains a break up on Jeremy Shardy. Uh, Brian Rosenthal there clicking in, saying he loves the ping pong table. Or he just says merely the ping pong table. But I presume that's a positive. I'll add the adjective in there. Or is it a verb to love? I guess it's a verb. Um, we want the verb for us, uh, by the way, as well. So you love us too. Uh, David Fakina, his problem uh, is his back is always twitchy. That's why he spends so much time laying in court, quite yeah, possibly. He, he would have gotten to that volley that, that Rogers wasn't even going to, to stretch for. That's for sure. And he would have... I uh, you know, falling onto the ground, <laughs> which he does in every single match. Uh, what kind of pasta are you eating, Mario? Because that's the that's a question from Jane. What kind of pasta? Uh, if he means yeah, fusilli. the shape. I think. Fusilli. 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 Uh, yeah, and Brian is also saying something. Uh, the ping pong table. Yes, he I loves love it. it. He loves it. He thinks David Fakina is done. Ooh. Quite possibly, uh, it's at juice at the moment. Um, but when you say done, do you mean? not going to be able to continue because of the back or um, you just mean done in terms of this first set or perhaps even the match. Let's see how that pans out. It is game point for the Spaniard though right now. Yeah, it's break point, point, however, with Sabalenka again. So let's see how this point pans out. First serve is a fault, not the ideal start for the Belarusian. To be honest, I did not see the deuce point. No, I didn't. When no. She had a game point and uh, threw out the drive volley mm -hmm. uh, earlier on. I did not see the deuce point though. Let's have a quick look at this. Okay, forehand, backhand of Shelby Rogers goes into the net. It's a deuce. Yeah, she is causing some issues uh, at first, at, uh, at least. And there's there's been many sloppy errors in that game from Sabalenka, so that, that's something that she could possibly clear up as the match goes on. Brian thinks that David Fakina is done in terms of the match. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just one set, albeit not even done yet, because Zavich Fakina has held on despite having a few shaky moments. Talking of shaky moments, Sabalenka's had a couple of those as well. She's faced two break points. Is she going to save her surf here? Let's see. They're in the middle of a rally. She probably has the slight advantage in that rally at the moment, especially thanks to that backhand. Now on the forehand side, but she goes oh. wide with that. Out, as Mario said, amid his pasta, fusilli, pesto, tomato, mushrooms, and parmesan. I can give you all the ingredients because I made it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, break point number three here for Shelby Rogers. Um, yeah, Sabalenka, uh, a bit wayward there. Okay, where are you going, Sava? Down the T, forehand goes long. No mushrooms, please, uh, Brian says. He's obviously not a fan of mushrooms. Okay, good to remember. Uh, break point, second serve, Sabalenka. Where are you going with this one? Wide to the backhand. Oh, it's a win. It's a winner. Well, a forced error, sorry. 
But it, it's effectively a winner because she's won the game, two games to one. She leads with a break. Shelby Rogers, Sabalenka. Am I wrong to pick her as my champion? A little bit early to start having panic buttons now. I'd be impressed uh, given that she's just one break down in round two. But we'll see how this one pans out. Uh, Tommy Paul trying to serve it out. Shardy has broken back as well and oh. does seem to be moving a lot, a, a lot better than in the opening game. So I guess he just sort of gets you know slow feet to start things off. But right now, looking pretty decent and yeah, winning even winning some some nice points against Shard uh, against Evans. Oh. He does hit uh, he does hit pretty well off the slice with that forehand and can get to the net, which he just did for another for another great uh, finish at, in the forecourt. On the way to breaking, by the way, that's an exquisite lob from Dan Evans. Uh, when for his break, dare I say that? Oh, they showed that, that lob, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I was talking about it a few minutes ago. That was uh, the that was the break point in the first game. Yeah, yeah exactly. Dare I say that um, uh, Shardy breaking back, uh, given his vaccine troubles, he's been boosted, uh, I guess, uh, by that. Hope you like that one in the live chat. Um, uh, Ghosty, they're saying that sounds delicious. He's obviously a fan of mushrooms. Uh, unlike Brian, uh, he's saying, Brian's saying Sabal will be fine. I think you're right, but let's see. Shelby, of course, I'm sure you touched on this while I was making the pasta, knocking out Ash Barty. So a little bit of reputation for knocking out uh, players with a lot of pedigree. She's building a bit of pedigree for herself. Albeit, I think I had her going far in New York again last year, but she didn't go very far. I think she lost to on Jabeur. I mean, you might say that's a tough draw, but I think I had her knocking Jabeur out. And of course, Jabeur ends up getting to the final. Uh, Jabeur, by the way, talking of which, and tough draws, she will be playing Von Drusova, I believe, tomorrow. Um, so that's one to look out for uh, here on Talking Tennis. And uh, yeah, Shelby Rogers, 15 love up. Yeah, Shelby lost to on Jabeur in the, fir in the fir no, I'm pretty sure I had her progressing there and I think even making the quarters uh, because then she would play like Kudermetov at Kasatkina. Also, Kudermetov at Kasatkina were in the same section again, like, uh, like they are here. And then Jaber, of course, played Tomlianovic in the quarters. Yeah, I think I, I think I had Rogers in the quarters there as well. Uh, although it was a close match, to, to be fair, uh, she won the opening set, then dropped the next two. We will be seeing these two matches to their conclusion. These two matches, in principle, being uh, Sabalenka against Shelby Rogers, um, along with uh, Davidovich Vakina here. Uh, Tommy Paul. So once those two matches have concluded, we will also be concluded for part one of our marathon, so to speak. And we'll be back for part two when Kokinakis and Andy Murray get away, uh, get underway in a few hours from now. So two parts today uh, to give us a little bit of rest and respite and maybe you too. Why is Brian saying, wow, Taylor Townsend? She was leading a, a double, she was a double break up a second ago against Alexandrova. I'm watching a break point between Shardy and Evans, so can't check now, but that's probably why. Well, Shard, uh, Evans has just broken with some great defense. Uh, Shardy wasn't able to, to, you know, to, to be explosive enough with that forehand to finish off the point. A long, very long rally. Uh, and Alexandrova is actually two, uh, I mean, Townsend is two points away from the set. Now, now three points, but still leading 5-1. And yeah, uh, that that that's that's a pretty that would be an excellent win, of course. Although, as we as we said, she she does have a very funky playstyle that's uh, unique in the women's game at the moment, and uh, perhaps that's also what Alexandrova is not handling well. Brian, are you a Taylor Townsend fan? Let us know. So Rogers trying to consolidate the break here uh, leads thirty fifteen. By the way, if you ever in uh, in if your curiosity as to what the comments are, um, Damien, you can always just click the YouTube oh, link. Oh, Shard, uh, what, what? Go on, tell uh, me. Apparently, Evans has not broken uh, because Shardy's uh, a ball fell out of Shardy's pocket during the rally, and it was like right before he hit an error. Uh, but yeah, yeah, according to the rules, it is a let, not a not a lost point. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's gonna be <laughs> they're they're gonna re they're gonna replay the points and Evans of course is not understandably happy. pissed although you know it is according to the rules. Evans is sitting down now. Oh now now Shardy is talking to the umpire, so maybe she's actually gonna award the point to Evans. Something crazy is happening there. Yeah, you, you could see the ball I think here flying out of his pocket. Oh yeah, here it's gonna fall out. 
and this this was the forehand that he that he uh, that he missed. Uh, and then he gesticulates towards the ball, saying, "Look, <laughs> oh, oh wow! I wonder if she's going to reverse the decision because I, I guess yeah, because oh, Evans has already sat down, and Shardy was getting points for his next serve, and now they're now they're talking, and I somehow cannot. <laughs> That's a great shot of David. Uh, a great image of. Dan Evans is back of his head as he just looks on from his seat. I also love the psychology involved of him just going to sit down. There's a brilliant return winner from Savalenka. Very that good. Was, uh, that was to avoid get, you know, giving uh, Rogers the game. So it's deuce now. Uh, Brian there saying that uh, he's a huge fan of Daniel Collins. Uh, and I think many of us are, me included. Um, <laughs> very good ghosty. <laughs> Um, yeah, huge fan of Daniel Collins. Me too. I think particularly that run to the Australian Open final last year really caught my attention with her aggressive playing style. You might argue I should have seen it before, but really, um, I hadn't. So there we go. Uh, but she's been great and she was great again in her first two matches. There's a lot of drama in, for, in terms of her matches, three set tough matches as she had in both the first and the second round. Still got some concerns about that knee injury that she had and all that strapping. But I will say this. No issues with her movement whatsoever. Uh, so that's good news. Good news for Sabalenka right now as well. She's got a break point. Uh, let's know what happens with Dan Evans' ball gate. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. still in the chat. Based on the fact that Charlie is still arguing, I think he's losing the point. I mean, I guess she just didn't, uh, you know, call a... Yeah, he... he, he, uh, he ba basically, what I, what I think happened was that, um, you know, the, the umpire, you can't hinder yourself. The umpire has to call the, the hindrance, <laughs> so, uh, or the let, for that matter. So I think uh, what Shardy is basically saying that after he missed the forehand, he said, well, the ball, oh, she's calling the supervisor now. Uh, I think Supervisor, was... feels like we're in the supermarket. <laughs> supervisor, we've yeah. got a problem on aisle number three. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think what happened was simply Shardy after he missed that shot, he uh, yeah he immediately turned to the ball that he knew fell out of his pocket. But yeah, <laughs> you cannot hinder yourself. There was a funny point last year, the challenger between Kozlov and someone else, where he lost the shoe, and the opponent was trying to hit at the shoe. Uh, but yeah, because you cannot hinder yourself, the the umpire didn't call the let. It's it's like you know the decision wasn't clear in that case. I think I, I still think he should have actually done that because it was also hindering the opponent. Uh, but because the shoe was on Kozlov's side and because yeah, he was he was you know on his sock, uh, there, there was no problem with uh, you know with the opponent. He 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 wasn't hindered by 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 that uh, by that incident according to the umpire. And yeah, uh, he ended up losing the point. Kozlov. I mean. Um. Yeah, uh, Savalenka here has a break point. Back to that. Oh, she's blown it there with a long uh, shot there on the forehand. Shard is still trying to make his case. Uh, in terms of uh, supermarket references, it's almost like um, uh, the pickpocketer. Uh, the things have fallen out of his pocket on this occasion. It happens to be a tennis ball. Uh, eight unforced errors already from Rogers. Oh, yeah, I was just saying to you, Damien, if you ever want to see the comments, you have the option of doing what you're doing right now or just open the YouTube link and you'll you'll see... The comments that are being said there. I can see yeah, them. if you can, that's fine. Um, I will possibly even put the computer. Maybe I'll even put the computer here so oh, we can. Fine. Uh, yeah, ghosties. Wait. Keep talking, you're right. Yeah, Gusty is saying that you can't hinder yourself, lol. You've never, <laughs> clearly never met my cousins. I think that's actually kind of how it's, uh, you know, how it's in the rules. Simply, uh, but I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, by the way, I'm not. Um, yeah, never mind. Uh, never mind. Uh, supervisors there. Supervisors yeah. on court. Although the supervisor seems to be quite interested to see or hear what the umpire has to say. Maybe the supervisor is starting to wonder if uh, Shardy is. Uh... I mean, is this a 60 40 match beforehand for Dan Evans, or is it more heavily in his favor, would you say? Definitely more heavily in his favor, right? Just because Shardy has not played in a year and a half, basically. Yeah. Uh, of course, then that also makes it very hard for us to evaluate where he's at with his game. Uh, but yeah, after such a long break, you you gotta love this draw when you're done, Evans. Evans plays Bagnis and Shardy in the, in the opening two rounds. I mean, you, you rarely get e an easier route than that on a on a hard court. Of course, when it comes to Bagnis and of course with, uh, with Shardy coming back after such a long break, we've got yeah a free one lead for Rogers now. Yeah, she's held. There were some issues in that game for sure. Yeah, <laughs> seven and a half minutes. 
Uh, yeah, but she's still through. And by the way, there was also a comment about Muhova and Collins uh, being the possibly the best match of the women's tournament so far. Would you guys agree with that? Of the matches I've seen, yes. Um, but there have been a few that have had some interesting results, you know, going into three sets. Collins' first match, in fact, in the first round was of that nature. But I would say yes. Um, it was dramatic. And I always like a, a match with lots of breaks of serve, but particularly when it, it's resulting in winners rather than wayward shots. I find it very exciting. But there is one asterisk for us, and that is that it occurred at about 2 p.m. after no sleep for the best part of 24 hours. So it was a case of, oh my goodness, I can't believe this is turning into an exciting match. Whereas we were quite looking forward to it being straight sets one way or the other. Anyway, one thing is from Brian, why is the supervisor dressed like that? Like it's snowing. Uh, I guess they're wearing a lot of clothes, uh, perhaps a, a very hefty jacket. Yeah. Um, yeah, indeed. It certainly certainly looks more like winter down under than, than summer, given the outfit. Yeah, I mean, for, to be fair, maybe he's not from Australia and... I know, he thought it was winter. Um, he's just talking out of Shadi, so it looks like he's supporting the umpire's decision. Yeah. Um, but has there even been a case, uh, has there ever been a case when, you know, the supervisor has been called and he decided to uplift the, <laughs> the umpire's decision? I, I agree, although just for a second, the way he was trying to get more details, he's now trying to placate um, yeah. Shadi, who sat down, and the scoreboard has changed, if that means anything, if Eurosport are in charge of of the scoreboard, so to speak. Um, so I think he's lost his case. He is sitting down. Um, but as you say, it's very rare for these things to be overturned. Tell us what's going on with Taylor Towns and uh, Damien. She's 6-1 up. Uh, yep. And just starting the second set. Uh, I also wanted to that, uh, you know, return to that uh, best match of the women's tournament so far. Okay. I, I'm looking at it, and like of the things I've seen, I think the only comparable uh, match would be schneider Sakari, which was also yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And I think I would choose that one, although I, you know, there was slightly, bit, slightly, maybe, no, although maybe in the second set there was a lot of drama in Schneider Sakari. Uh, but that deciding, you know, getting to a deciding tiebreak with Muhova Collins is certainly a good argument to choose that as well. Uh, there's been some other matches that were dramatic, but we did not see them like Vekic Selekmietova or Buxa Andrescu, which I don't think. Yes. Well, if you watched the 20 minutes today, uh, which I did earlier, I might uh, post a link to it in the live chat. I think I did a reasonable job of remembering most of the matches I saw, uh, and in particular that Collins match, uh, where it was just full of breaks of serve, and uh, it was exciting. I think maybe I would say that was um, slightly more dramatic than the Sakari one. Um, I'm not saying that Sakari was never in trouble. She certainly was. But maybe I just always had a feeling that Saku would win, whereas the Mukova and Collins one ebbed and flowed. And there was probably two or three twists in the um, in the Sakari one, whereas I felt there was a few more in the uh, Mukova-Collins match in terms of the fact that Mukova's easily leading the first set, 5-2 with a double break. Collins gets one break back, then another uh, with the searing tennis that she's capable of playing. You go into the tie break thinking the momentum is with the American, but no, not any of it, out of, not a bit of it. Um, she ends up losing the tie break 7-1. In fact, a remarkable statistic is she won her, she broke serve four times in a row and still hadn't won a set um, because in between that, she lost the tiebreaker quite comfortably. Um, then, of course, she wins that second set reasonably comfortably, thanks to the searing start she makes to the second set. You like how I use the word searing twice in a matter of minutes there. Um, and then the third set, well, I think uh, uh, Collins took an early break. You think, well, maybe that's enough, but it's just too early in a way because so many breaks have served. Mukova broke back. Mukova had a few chances, but once it went to the deciding set tiebreak, uh, Collins took the lead and never relinquished it. And as Mario uh, just said in my ear, there was a funny moment where Collins uh, takes a 7-3 lead in a 10-point deciding set tiebreak. But she's not aware of the fact that um, she, uh, she, has, she, she drops the racket thinking she's won it. First to seven, right? Uh-uh, first to 10 in a deciding set tiebreak. She took it quite well. She sort of started laughing to herself, whereas many of us might be devastated, particularly the effort she'd put in. 
Anyway, she closes it out 10-6, and there we go. Ghosty there saying Schneider, uh, Sakari was great, but to be honest, I don't think Maria was in top shape. That's why for me the Collins Mukova was out ahead. They were playing better. Yeah, I think the, the quality may have been slightly higher in Collins Mukova, but there we go. Um, anyway, back to the present, uh, which is, by the way, we were talking about history there, but it was only a few hours ago. Back to the present, uh, uh, which was, uh, which is now, because that's what the present is, right, Damien? Now is the present, I believe. Yeah, now is the future, now is the present. <laughs> anyway, uh, Shardy and Evans, uh, the, you know, the, the whole debate lasted 10 minutes, but of course Shardy did not uh, manage to convince either the umpire or the supervisor. So it's now, uh, you know, they're, they're back on the court and he has lost his first, well, the, he, Evans has held to, I think to love even uh, in the previous game. Um, hopefully, Shardy can just put the and uh, these uh, memories past him, and he can get back to playing. Because yeah, just before that, just before it happened, he was definitely having a very good uh, moment. Even though he was, you know, he was broken. He, he lost that point where he where the ball fell out of his pocket. Anyway, uh, yeah, here we have Sabalenka. Mm-hmm. Sabalenka is uh, yeah a small chance because she she's love thirty up in her return game and now rogers has to serve a second serve the first was too wide um, a great return no 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 no, no, she, no, no, no. she did not make it it's why so 15 30 it's a pretty long match so far because 36 minutes and we we just have five games and a half uh, completed so yeah pretty pretty long timing for for this match so far uh, yeah obviously a lot of tight games in the beginning i was reading these comments i don't know if you have already answered what you uh, what do you all make of the Kandro Vosis in the stands, hollering for Collins. Does she have a following down under? Yeah, again, I mean, we were not, we were watching without sound. Uh, yeah, uh, with, oh, Jesus, without sound. Uh, so not exactly sure, to be honest with you. I don't know if we, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we had so many shots of, uh, of you know, huge, uh, like huge groups of Aussies uh, following her, cheering, cheering for her. Um, there's, I guess, there's no particular reason other for you know for Aussies to cheer for her other than the Australian Open finals last year, which maybe yeah. was when she uh, when she gained that following, I suppose, right? Yeah, even because she lost against Barty. Yeah, when 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 an opponent when winning probably else, would, uh, wouldn't be the same now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but even along the way, I mean, she must have picked up. That was the best event of her career uh, by a country yeah, mile. Uh, she was she was playing some absurd stuff there. Especially, of course, crashing the backhand as she usually does. So uh, perhaps that's when she gained an uh, Aussie following that that she can now rely on when she gets uh, whenever she is in Melbourne or any of the other warm up. Oh, that was a great second serve. So was, cool. Yeah, good. Was that though? Uh, wasn't that a let though? I think it was. Ah, it was let. Okay, yeah. without sound is. Yeah, there's another. There's there's, there's okay, a second. Okay, so another second serve. Second serve. Another one now the forehand, but the forehand is in the net, and so Sabalenka breaks back. Three games all in this very very tight first set. And now we've we've just seen that Rogers served served her second serve at 119 kilometers per hour. It was no. justified though. Like she, the, the the kick was pretty tough to handle, and and Sabalenka yeah. oh, did not hit, handle it that yeah, well. She was not a, was not yeah. a bad second serve. Yeah, she sort of won both. It. I think the the uh, camera crew just you know TV crew just sort of wanted to. To show yeah, it for just, us as if it was oh what a what a poor second serve. Yeah, yeah, but it, it was wasn't. Not. Yeah, it gave her the advantage. Yeah, she had the, the chance with the forehand to Yeah, to abs- ab- absolutely. The she hit a she, she had a pretty similar forehand with her uh, on one, you know, also serve plus one in in a previous game. Uh the break point where, which she had to save in the second game of the match, but uh this time she did not do that. Um, yeah. Now we have just yeah, that comment we have just answered. Oh, a difficult smash, uh, but Roger 
Rogers uh, misses the, the backhand, the backhand passing shot. So Sabalenka is now 30 love up in this seventh game of the set. Um, so Sabalenka looks like she, of course, she she's not in a big trouble like, uh, like she was 10, 15 minutes ago. And now she has three chances to, to take the lead in this set. And Katie Volinets, by the way, has taken the first set over Veronika Kudermetova. Mm. Uh, Jack is uh, very scared right now, trying to sleep, trying to catch some sleep before <laughs> uh, Andy Murray. But, <laughs> you know, just following maybe, maybe Volinets Kudermetova on his phone. Uh, he did pick her to reach the final. That's by the way, if that that's what I'm referring to, if uh, if someone in the in the live in, in the live stream does not know that, uh, we've talked about it sort of ad nauseum over the past two, three days. Though, um, yeah, the predictions have sort of, uh, especially recently, right? The, you you pick a bracket and then you sort of uh, start rooting for the matches just just to be right. Yeah. <laughs> that's been a yeah. very, that's been a very interesting part of tennis in recent years. I don't think that was really the case in the you know in the pre-internet era or uh, mm, even in the no, pre sort so. of you know Twitter uh, or websites that allow you like the the TNNS app or the ten, or tennis draw challenge. Like be before these sort of thing, things came along, I don't think anyone was really doing full bracket predictions. But even right now, you have you know uh, Eurosport experts picking uh, their brackets from during the quarterfinals upwards, for example, yeah, or, yeah, right. or something like that. So uh, it's clear that predictions is becoming a big part of the sport. I wonder if, that, if that's also related to gambling, because that's you know if you're gambling, that's sort of what you're doing as well, or for, for mostly for individual matches. You can bet outright as well, of course. And gambling is becoming a bigger part of the sport as well. So maybe maybe that's related. Yeah, here we had the 98 game held at Love from Sabalenka. So now she is a way better place than she was 15 minutes ago. Uh, Rogers now has some pressure because after getting broken, she she has to avoid to, to get broken again. Um, and yeah, here I, I have Davidovich Fokina Paul. This second set is starting in yeah, it, it's a tight start of this set, some some pretty close games, and we are on serve. Yeah, and Evans has taken the opening set against Shardy, you know, it, it, it's certainly not something that the Frenchman can look uh look and think that he really wrong or anything like that it was fairly tight and there is some chance some hope for him to keep turning this round uh, yeah 21 unforced errors uh, in in a six first set is probably not gonna cut it though uh he he of course uh outwinnered evans as well but uh but not to an extent that would allow him to uh, to still maintain the lead, but if if you remember what Shardy was playing, even in his prime, he he was always responsible for some of the wildest unforced error stats. I think there was a match against um, Berdig in like Canada or Cincinnati where he hit 75 unforced errors. I think in a in a best of three match, uh, definitely one of the more aggressive and therefore also error prone players. Savalenka so hit a great back and passing shot. Uh, even if Rogers is so far playing a, a nice service game, she's up 30-15 in a very, very important game for her because she, she has to stop uh, Savalenka's game streak. Uh, but Savalenka forces uh, uh, Rogers' errors with a very, very heavy forehand, so we are 30-all, and that's a very, very tricky situation now for, for Shelby Rogers. Um, who was uh, correct me for one up with a break? Um, Rogers had uh, three one up with a break. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and so now uh, that's a second serve. This very very big point on thirty all. Yeah, I don't think it was Canada or Cincinnati after all. But you know, never mind. Yeah, but Sabalenka misses a, a makeable return with a backhand, so 40-30, now game point for, for Rogers. Mm. 
Yeah, and let's see how this point, if, if Rogers can help, can hold this serve. Good forehand. She comes to the net and Sabalenka with a great passing shot and forces Rogers. Oh no, what happened? Uh, ah, okay, yeah. no, 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 the no, score no, was no. okay. It, it bounced on her <laughs> side of the net. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay, okay, so 40 all, uh, deuce. There's going to be a, a, a break chance for uh, Alejandro Davidovich mm -hmm. Fokina, though, uh, which I don't know if, it, if it's his first, but if there was one in the opening set, it certainly wasn't, you know, it didn't uh, mean I much. I think he uh, was in the last game. Uh, yeah, I but think. it didn't mean much since he was yeah, up, yeah, yeah, up yeah, a break yeah. anyway, right? Yeah, no, actually, no. Ah, no, 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 but it was a close game. But yeah, 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 there was a close service uh, game. He took, he took the game. I, so <laughs> let's see how he took the game. <laughs> Um, four into four, and now Davidovich is a good back, and then that's the mistake with uh, Paul's forehand. And so Davidovich Fokina has a break. Yeah, a now couple of this... sloppy errors from Paul to give it away, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, unlike Brian was uh, you know, telling us, maybe ADF is not done yet in this match. Yeah, I, it, it's a bit what I was thinking before the match. I. Um, I think uh, uh, if if Tommy Paul or Davidovich Fokina, one of the two, uh, take an advantage, they they can suddenly find a poor game or something like that to um, to try the opponent to 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 stay in the match. Um, and so now let's see. We are, we have a very very tight game here on Broad Labor Arena. Uh, Roger said. Two, two game points, but Sabalenka played two great points. And so we still are in this game after 47 minutes, we, we still are in the eighth game. And now Sabalenka is a break point. The first break point of this game, which is a very, very important break point because she can, uh, if she takes this point, then she, she goes to serve for, for the set after being down one three. So, um, very very important point point now to say from from Shelby Rogers. The first serve yeah, it's is It's going to be out. a second serve on the on the break points. There is a there is a chance for Sabalenka. She's already stepping very forward inside the court to take it. Did not do that much with the return mm -hmm. though, so there is a chance for Rogers. But she, Sabalenka gets a short ball, but does not make the back and down the line. Uh, a friend of mine is at the uh, you know live at the uh, Davidovich Fukina pole match, and he says that the, that it's so packed, and it's very surprised that there are that many Foki and pole fans in Australia, mm -hmm. and also says that the tennis tournaments should have an intelligence test. Because apparently uh, there is a pug crowd, but no atmosphere, according to him. And he says that um, crowds in France or Italy are so much more intelligent and better in that way. Oh. Interesting. Uh, I think he lives in Australia, but comes from Norway so or Sweden, something like that. So, um, yeah, he is uh, European, like, uh, like we are often called by Ghosty. He's also a Euro, so maybe that's why. Uh, so there's now a third a third game point from from Shelby Rogers. Savalenka miss miss uh, a makeable return with her backhand, uh, while Davidovich Fokina held his serve, and so he's now four one up in this second set. Evans has some chances. Yeah, Shardy had a, a, a he had a pretty great forehand down the line that just missed. I still think it was a good shot though. <laughs> Like if it went in, you know, it would have been so amazing. Yeah, and Roger serves to Second try serve. to win the win, try to win that game. Opened up the court for herself, but does not land yeah. the back in the blind. So another deuce. If she did, Sabanka would have been in big trouble in that point, or possibly. Tommy Paul is now one for down in the second, and Shardy is preparing to serve to try to save a second break point in that game already, being down a set and a break, which he unfortunately is because he double faults, is going to make his life a lot harder, of course. Alexandrova has broken in the second set, so Taylor Townsend not cruising to the finish just yet. 
And let's see what's happening in the Volnets Kudermetova match. We've got three breakpoints for Veronika Kudermetova in the second game of the of the second set. A slice return from Samalenka. Now a big, big backhand for her. It's a winner. So second break point of this game. Yeah, I, I totally agree with what Ghosty just said that uh, you don't get atmosphere from intelligent people. I was also surprised by that. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, in general, you probably get more atmosphere from, yeah, the opposite. I agree. That's why I was surprised with the, with the comment from my friend, yeah. He said, though, that he's going to explain uh, more in detail when he gets back home. Anyway, uh, Rogers has just uh, hit a pretty great backhand, uh, backhand on uh, down uh, breakpoint. Yeah. Just, a, just a serve plus one, but it was, you know, the depth was insane. Sabalenka didn't really flinch because it was in the other direction. Uh, there's also, you know, the, the first winners of the day are uh, Kolhoff and Skupski. So the, well, I guess the top seeds in doubles, right? Because they... Yeah, uh, they are the, the world number one, yeah, and the, the world number two, uh, over Alexander Bublik and John Patrick Smith. Interesting pairing, by the way, Bublik Smith. Uh, how do they yeah. even know each other? Let's see how this rally goes. And uh, Sabalenka, it's a back and cross court, uh, very nice, and with a forehand closes the point. So, third break point of the game. Yeah, there was a little too much play directed into the middle by, by Rogers and Sabalenka took full advantage with that huge backhand and just finished it off. Not doing enough with the ball, shall be there, but she 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 has saved a couple of break points in that game already. Maybe she can save another one. And Paul is uh, in trouble even in this game because she's 15-30 down on his serve, so... Um, Let's see, we can have two, two one-sided uh, sets. And oh. that's a break. So yeah. fourth straight game won by Sabalenka. Uh, now up 5-3, she's going to serve to close this first set. Yeah, Rogers was trying to land another one of these plus one backhand stunners, but apparently, I, I guess she could, didn't really have a choice. She was pushed wide by the, by the Sabalenka return and just missed it. Did not find the corner. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So now Davidovic Fokina is uh, two break points. Uh, and let's see how this first break point, and, and it's a mistake from Tommy Paul. So 5 1, Davidovic Fokina will serve for this second set. Yeah, I guess it's going to be like a match, uh, like the same yeah, like, as like, as it was, like I was saying before. Yeah, yeah. Davidovic yeah. Bovnik, where they can, they can win a set 6 6 love, and it does not matter. For, for the next one. Sabanka is 15 love up already in her yeah, service yeah, game. She's playing uh, much, much better. Yeah, the, the momentum before. is definitely on her side to, to try to close out this set. It's behind. No, no, never mind. Um, Taylor T now in, now in trouble, uh, said Brian a while ago. But yeah, indeed, she, she is down the break in that second set. It's another it. great serve from Sabalenka. Yeah, very love. She's two points away to from taking this this first set. Uh, which, uh, regardless of the score, uh, it's been a very very difficult first set. Uh, first set because she she's playing from almost almost an hour, fifty three minutes, and she. Yeah, the scoreline is probably going to look a little bit too lopsided for for how it went. Uh, yeah, what 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 matters uh, most is that she will probably have a set on the board in, yeah, yeah, in two points. Yeah, that's the only thing that matters. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> of course, yeah, if even, she takes even it, because but, yeah. even because in best of three, it's not a, a big a big deal uh, if you if you struggle to close a set. If you if you still manage to take, uh, for example, a straight sets win, regardless of how the first set. When it's still oh yeah yeah um, of course with, with especially with a break uh, you know a day of rest between the matches right for women I think in general even sometimes Masters Thousand events yeah, yeah, right yeah. Are, are so much tougher physically than a Grand Slam yeah definitely even because you can you can play your first round against uh, I don't know number twenty four oh, yeah. world and then having to face 16, 12, yeah. <laughs> something like the that the draws are the generally final. much much tougher yeah. 
Of course, you usually get six matches unless it's like Indian Wells in Maya or Miami and you're yeah, unseated. It's a great game. Uh, yeah, basically anything that comes back of the, of the return, Sabalenka is just now brutally taking. And it, it, this wasn't even a poor return. The previous one maybe was, was it that short. This, one, this one's long and Sabalenka is just full of confidence, blasting the backhand, whatever happens. So yeah, I think that after, after a difficult start, Sabalenka is looking quite good even in this match, I, I think. Some... some... Um, yes, some mistakes at the beginning, uh, but it can happen against a good, uh, good opponent like Shelby Rogers. I think that this this first set has been good for her. I think. Yeah, the last two games were just fire. Uh, Alexandrova is leading the uh, leading by a double break in the second set, so it looks very likely that we will get a uh, decider there. And Kudermetova is free love up in the in the second against Folinets, trying to fight back in there. I think Davidovich Fokina is going to have a set point soon, but uh, yeah, he had a, he had a set point on forty thirty. Now he is due on his service game, uh, now he's for sir. And so yeah, second set point for Davidovich Fokina to to level the score against Tommy Paul. Oh wow. Uh, Ghosty is telling us an anecdote, which I'm not sure if it's the right place for this, honestly, but we will try to understand it. So when Brazil was looking to build its capital in the 50s, they made this massive concrete and steel brutalist complex. All the workers fade favelas. Uh, when the government uh, workers came, they all moved to the favelas where there was culture and music and food and life. Okay, that's what you mean. So that's related to the, uh, I think, to the atmosphere at, uh, at the Australian match and uh, how you think that you would get better atmosphere with, or not you know, not with the the elite, let's say, which is yeah, I think it's very true. Although tennis is a an elitist sport anyway, I, I doubt there are uh, you know there are many uh, people that are not uh, you know, not intelligent watching it anyway. Yeah, um, I agree. It, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a sport for the rich still. Uh, although I'm not saying I'm rich, but. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I am. I have also to say that uh, it's not always um, it's not always related the the fact that you have uh, you have money and the fact you you can follow tennis and you can can watch tennis in. Uh, no, it's just easier, I think, for for you know for uh, for the rich to get into. I guess you don't have to read that, bro. That was just for you. Though. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. And Shelby Rogers now is serving to start the second set, and, and I think uh, uh, hey, she's she's already love thirty, and it's a very very important important game for her because uh, she lost the last the last five games um, of the of the first set and of the match, and losing another one. Uh, can can give Sabalenka another great boost of confidence to uh, yeah to to try to play even better because she it's how she works usually so uh, yeah I don't I don't even know if her confidence can be boosted because she's like flying right now yeah yeah. Uh, this the, now now Rogers get a gets a pretty good second serve in, uh, but that uh, that low thirty points, uh, Sabalenka just blasted another return, another, another backhand this time, this time of the return. In this roller coaster match, after saving three set points, Paul has broken. So so yeah, there's still a break uh, for Davidovich Fokina, but yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of uh, unpredictable so far for, for how it's going. Um, yeah, Davidovich had three set points on his serve, and, but yeah, that wasn't enough to to take this second set. Paul manages to to break, and now she, he's he's still there to fighting in this in this second set. Shelby Rogers has just hit an ace the fifth overmatch to to level this game to 30 all and now 40 30 serving uh, again uh, a very very good first serve 
And so she has a chance to, to hold, which will be very, very important because, uh, yeah, 6 3 losing the last five games of the set. And then you, uh, you need to, to hold to, uh, even if uh, it's, it's not the case this time because Sabalenka uh, has just hit uh, an amazing back and down the line. So, uh, another deuce on Roger Sir, uh, like in, her previous games <laughs> yeah okay i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm not gonna read that now but yeah as you as you hear I, uh, as you heard i chuckled i think john is a as a big united buff that uh they're, they're, they don't have a rivalry with tottenham do they yeah. i think it's chelsea who uh who's awesome. arsenal as well yeah uh anyway um what i was going to say was that townsend and alexandrova are now at once at all and I think we were talking yesterday about uh, the Tsitsipas brothers in doubles playing Shelton Eubanks, but it seems that Shelton and Eubanks uh, decided to draw. Uh, Eubanks is out okay. of the tournament already in singles, so I, I you know, believe that it was probably Ben's decision to, to try to get himself as uh, as ready as possible for the uh, for the match against Jari today, or maybe for his third round if he comes through, which I think he is probably like a small favorite to do. Although, yeah, for some players, uh, like for some players, yeah. also a tough first week physically and mentally because uh, often in and out of the court, uh, and yes, some first round matches uh, played yesterday, and some of them played uh, fifty percent on Tuesday and um, another fifty percent on Wednesday, and then today again there will be the second round for for some of them. So yeah. And, uh, very very hot in the first days then not so hot uh, yesterday but there 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 was a lot of rain uh, so yeah not an easy first week to handle from for the players who who, who had not played on the on the show court with the, with the roof closed Oh yeah, some of them have had some uh, you know real advantage there. Like uh, yeah, yesterday we still had uh, round one matches finishing right, and some of the players were already in the in round three. I think the last two round one matches were Zhang Tig and uh, Parizas Diaz Hadatmaya, which you know they, they 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 didn't go that long. But if if Hadatmaya fought back there in the third set in the and made it a third set, then. It would have been a real disadvantage for for today's match between I think Parisas Diaz and Potapova. And Sabalenka has just hit uh, a great serve, and so she's fifteen love, uh, fifteen all. Sorry, uh, trying to avoid a difficult situation in this game. Another important serve. This uh, another ace. Uh, 186 the speed of this of this first serve so 3015 i guess there are no doubts in any of our minds that arena sabrenka is going to win a grand slam title at some point though right even if it doesn't happen at the at the australian open i think yes um yeah i think she she has uh all the um, yeah, all the qualities, all the possibilities in uh, her racket to to try to to win a Grand Slam. She's not been so so far uh, because she she reached three semifinals in the last two seasons. So I have to say that she she's also became yeah I'd say consistent in, in Grand Slams, but she still has to. Uh, to make uh, a step forward last year in Wimbledon she uh, she had not the chance to to defend her semi-final uh, let's see this year I think that she yeah she has uh, she has a good chance yeah in this Australian Open I think because she she's playing well even if she's facing uh, some troubles uh, um, at some point of the match uh today so far is still a good uh, yeah uh, an acceptable performance uh, now she has to to face a break point yeah nice nice combo there from rogers pushing her white to the back and then just cleaning up the inside in and by the way Fokina, yeah. yeah with another break of serve so davidovich fokina took the second serve six two 
uh, 6-2 Paul, 6-2 Davidovich Fokina, and so, um, yeah, one set all on court seven. Second serve for Sabalenka, Sabalenka down the break point. Probably no, no ips anymore, right? That's not, not early 2022 anymore. There's Rowley. She is leading and hitting that backhand again. Yeah, and there's a fantastic shot. Yeah, yeah, great backhand. Crouching, crouching a little bit, doing it the uh, Agnieszka Advanska style. <clears throat> Just having, really care, but... having a look there at David Fakina there, um, uh, winning that set against Tommy Paul. And I have to come into the conversation here to remind us all that Brian, about half an hour ago, said, That's it. Tommy Paul has won this match. Fakina is done. So let's see uh, if he's going to respond to that. Um, by the way, though, Davidish Fakina is taking some treatment on what seems to be a... Is it the wrist or the knee? Not sure. Anyway, one set there, one set all there. Um, that did kind of had four or five sets written all over it before the match even got underway. And, well, we're going to have at least four, but may well be five. Um Jane is pleased that uh, Davidovich Fakina won that set, so uh, that's good. Uh, just having a quick look at some of the uh, action elsewhere. Savalenka has just held for one game all against uh, Rogers. Yeah, great hold because she she had to save a break point with the second serve, but she she hit an amazing backhand down the line, and the backhand is uh, is looking pretty good in this match. Um, yeah, so. Uh, she she avoids what happened in the first set when she was uh, down a break in the beginning. For for now, she she avoided this possibility and one game all. Rogers now has to serve. Um, and Ghosty was asking about Sarina Diaz from Kazakhstan. Yeah. Whatever happened to her? Uh, yeah, last year she played two matches at the Australian Open and the French. Uh, I think with a PR because she hasn't she hasn't, she hasn't competed in a while. Took a set of Rybakina at the Australian Open, which I did not remember honestly. Uh, but yeah, I just found an article from like June when she announced that she was going to uh, end her season. Uh, apparently, she was trying to play through pain in 2022, although not trying you know that much since she played two matches <laughs> up until June. Up until even May, because it was uh, the Ron Garros qualifying at the Australian Open, she was in the main draw, and apparently she ended her season to try to just uh, you know recover. Uh, this time, actually, do it right, not try to play for pain anymore. And she uh, hopes to be back in 2023. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been a few years for sure since we've seen, seen her compete at uh, at her real level. So here the third set has just started and Davidovic Fugina is serving and took the first point, 15 love, while Rogers uh, was love 15, but she she won this second point of the game, uh, avoiding a, a pretty difficult situation, um, but still in trouble because she missed the, the forehand and so 15 30. Mm, three uh, three close games to start this second set like uh, like has happened I I would say in almost the world match um, and so that's an important point for her let's see how it goes uh, the first serve is in and Sabalenka hit the back and long so 30 all for now the issue of a break point as avoided by Rogers for yeah. now. There are also the first winners in women's doubles today uh, and in the whole event since the doubles wasn't started yesterday. Babos and Ladenovic. So another excellent pairing. And the, the ultra <laughs> challenger doubles team, Cash Patten, is through as well. We talked a bit about them with Jackies today, I think, or maybe with Jeff, I can't remember. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. We've got a pressure point in Sabalenka Rogers, so let's look at how it goes. 30 all on the Rogers serve. She goes down the tee to the backhand of Sabalenka. Uh, good attack there from Shelby Rogers, but uh, equally good defense from Sabalenka. But then she dumps a backhand into the net. Going for it big, of course. Shakes her head. 40 30. Goes to any more anecdotes about um, workers in Brazil building a capital city? 
uh, because they can't decide whether to have it in Rio or Sao Paulo, so they dump it in Brasilia and then end up the workers in favelas, if you have any more uh, little anecdotes like that. Put a little asterisk as well, so we know not to put it up on the screen. <laughs> um, uh, there is a good anecdote about uh, Serena and Zarina. <laughs> Uh, I saw Serena play funny. Zarina, okay? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the fans were yelling support, but you couldn't tell. I think you could tell. <laughs> uh, yeah. Probably, yeah, Serena had a history of Indian Wells, but I think by the time she returned, I, it, it was all right, right? I think they were just delighted to see her probably after all these years. But Good yeah, return, so, Sabalenka. Yeah. Mario, are you a Juventus guy? Uh, I think we I think we talked about wow, it yesterday. Wow, but Somebody, yeah. What? Are you a Juventus guy? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a Napoli fan. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Just yeah. asked about Napoli. Yeah. Yeah, Napoli. Uh, yeah, that's my my team. Um, yeah, I'm also part of my family there, so it's also it was also a bit natural for for me to to support Napoli since I. Not so, not so, not as a child, I have to say since 12, 13, um, yeah, not before. When did, John, when did your obsession with Manchester United start? 1985. Okay. So, Becker wins Wimbledon <laughs> and uh, I begin an obsession with Manchester United. The only difference was is that Becker went on to have a very immediate period of success i had to wait about um seven or eight years for that to occur old Trafford. it then occurred for the next two decades and now we are a decade in the doldrums again there's a break point for sabalenka in the third game uh, we'll see how it goes and then i'll tell you which team i was obsessed with as a kid <laughs> shelby rogers to serve facing a break point will she, she break so perhaps yeah. there's some nerves with uh, there she does have a very high toss as well, so that always tends to break down when you're when you're facing pressure. And there's a second serve, Sabanka again stepping inside the baseline, which she should do. And, oh, and she's got last it. an insane cross court backhand winner. Yeah, well, as a kid, I was obsessed with Olympic Lyon. Uh, that was the, oh. of course their prime, uh, but it quickly went away with all the players. Like I was actually <laughs> a fan with uh, I was a fan of the players, not the club, as it turns out. Uh, Juninho Pernambucano, I think, was my was my favorite footballer. But in general, I loved all that uh, 2001, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, and young. Well, 2003 maybe not so much because I was four years old. But uh, when they were, you know, dominating France and uh, trying to win the Champions League, the mm -hmm. the loss to PSV and and, and the quarterfinals through penalties or to Milan in next year, that hurt me a lot. But as yeah. I said, I I yeah, when the players went away, I I was already. Uh, I didn't care anymore. So, Leila Fernandez there just arriving today. She will be in action against Caroline Garcia. Uh, Garcia there is warming up. If we had the energy, and in, in me in particular, I'm sure we would love to cover that, but that just falls at the wrong time for us. So, we won't be able to cover that on the channel, but we'll be back again at 10. <laughs> yes, uh, Maria. Sorry, Leila Fernandez there um, warming up in the parking lot. Maybe there's no space for her. Maybe she's going to be outraged and we're going to see that in a de Netflix documentary that there was no space for her to warm up in the gym. Uh, much like there was no space for Kaspar Ruud to practice on the practice courts at Roland Garros. Uh, he seemed quite annoyed at that during the Netflix series. Uh, Ghost is also asking about Koulibaly. I think he's in Chelsea now, right? He is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's so gone to Chelsea. I'm Okay for you? No problem. Really? Uh, um, I have to say that I'm, I'm very, very... Uh, close to 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 the team more than the players, so I. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other way around, like me, not like me, me with Leon. Uh, okay. I like some players, and I I start supporting them even when they they go away and they go to to other teams. But uh, for me, it's it's the same when it comes to Napoli. For me, it, uh, it becomes first, and, and then the players. So. Yeah, I'm. Um, I also like when there is a, a a bit of a change in in the team and with some players away and some new players. Uh, I I kind of like it. There's a bit of a lucky net court for Sabalenka, but she is hitting with a lot of confidence. And of course, as we've established, and actually Jensen Brooksby told us in Auckland, uh, net courts are not lucky. 
<laughs> uh, I think that's 17 times you've mentioned that anecdote and counting, Damien. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's just been a lot of net courts, you know, and sometimes even very crucial ones, like the Murray Berrettini match point, of course. Indeed, Murray winning a match uh, with a net court. Also, um, the match yesterday between, was it Kubler and uh, Kachanov? Yeah. Uh, Kublo and Hatchinov, uh, which ended with a net cord. Uh, I mean, it did end the match with a net cord, although it might well have felt like it after a 70-shot rally. Uh, that's particularly amusing. wonder how long that would have continued on for had there not been a net cord. Oh, As yeah. Savalenka hits a winner down the line, 30-15, and the Belarusian is very much in control here in this matchup on the Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne. Anyone know what's going on between Dan Evans and Shardy? Any more yeah, um, Evans debates? Evans serving for the set. Um, well, he will be serving for the set after the changeover. I don't think there's been any debates, though. No. Taylor Townsend and Alexandrov are having some very long games at the beginning of the third set. Uh, in fact, I think the, the very long game is on Alexandrov's serve. Kudamatova has made it one set all against Volnyets, the qualifier. Um... Yeah. Um, Rogers sort of gives uh, Sabalenka a taste of her own medicine with that uh, short angle backhand return winner. But that's, uh, you know, that's not as important as Sabalenka blasting the same on a burn the break point in the last game. But she does get to 30 all. So maybe it will prove crucial as the, as the game goes on as well. Let's see the, this important point. And Sabalenka, it's a very good forehand. The back is not so good, but then another great forehand uh, going yeah. down the line. So 40 30. Now she has a game point. Here, Tommy Paul has, has just held an important service game, a very, very, very long service game played by Tommy Paul. Uh, but yeah, uh, now he's one game all in this third set, and yeah, it's this becoming a, a very interesting and close battle between the two players with some ups and downs, a bit of a roller coaster one. But yeah, still uh, still fun to to follow the score and to watch some point. There are some some nice rallies, and yeah. So I think that uh, this match can be can be pretty good till the end now not so good the, the drop shot but tommy paul misses a very 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 easy i have to say forehand and so 30 lot on davidovich fokina sir um yeah sabalenka survived the important moment you know that, that 30 30 point when she didn't really handle them the moon ball from Rogers as well but then eventually uh, you know, return to the dominant position in the rally was so important. And now she blasts another return winner. Forehand or backhand? Uh, I, uh, I did not see it. Okay, I, okay. Mean, I, I, just, I just saw the, the ball flying, but we can see the replay. Oh, I, I thought it was a forehand. Yeah. She just unleashed. Uh, 130 kilometers an hour. I think we are criticized for using this metric, th this sort of scale. Uh, but, you know, uh, in, in it's miles, it's going to be like to... 70 or 80. I don't know, something like that, yeah. Uh, I think it's 1.6 1. 1. or something like that. Uh, uh, that you yeah, have to I know that by. 62 miles per hour mm -hmm. are 100, 100 kilometers per hour. Oh, okay, and it's uh, going to be like 70 something, yeah. And now low 30. So Rogers is in a big, big trouble, and Sabalenka looks really close to. To win this match, especially if she she manages to <laughs> take especially if she finds another backhand return with yeah, yeah, like yeah. this one. So there's currently that was an yeah, ace. But that's really? an ace. That's an ace. Okay, it clipped the line from Rogers. So but... two two return winners exactly. and one ace. Yeah. I just saw uh, um, a, oh, look, well, a clip from uh, Keys uh, playing Wong yesterday where mm. she hit four return winners oh, in amazing. one game, but it wasn't consecutive. It was uh, it, there, it, there were some deuces in that game. Uh -huh. also. Maybe Sabalenka can actually improve that even more. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's fairly all now, so she hasn't hit a return winner, but if she blasts two now, it's going to be a pretty legendary game. <laughs> Especially as Rogers is, of course, not, not even serving that poorly. What will she do to Ikech Fiontek in the final if they meet? <laughs> if she's doing that to Rogers? Nevans with two set points. Rogers does hit another great serve, though. Also down the tee on the, uh, on the deuce side, so... 
perhaps there's uh, there's actually some hope that this match will be longer from here. Uh, yeah, Shardy has just uh, missed a return to give Evans a two-set lead. Uh, unfortunately, this match is now going a little like we expected, but I think, yeah, Shardy is still looking pretty sharp for, for being out for so long. And uh, I hope he can get to play, you know, just at least a couple more uh, events uh, where he can, uh, you know, show his peak level again. Although it's going to be a little hard with uh, him turning 36 in February. This was, a, it looks like this set was a little bit cleaner from Shardy, but he also wasn't the dominant. Uh, you know, force from the baseline anymore. He he tried to play a little, a little more of a composed game against Evans, and it did not work out. You know, well, the result is the result is the same, but he actually uh, lost the set for six, but only lost three points. Uh, well, well, only won three points less than Evans, so it was quite tight. Ooh. Yeah, Rogers just had no idea what to do with that short ball there. Yeah. Uh, I can't blame her really. It was really hard to come up with, with an answer there. She ended up trying oh, to hit like a half volley backhand with two hands, but it wasn't really a half volley. She tried to she tried to do it. That was not gonna work. And she does miss the first serve on uh, down a break point. So Sabalenka is of course already setting up for her for another return with her. And yeah, Rogers felt the pressure. She knew, she knew she had had to make you know she had to take some risk. Yeah, she just knew she had to take some risk to uh, avoid Sabalenka just blasting another return winner, and she did miss uh, a pretty risky second serve. So we've got a six three four one lead for Sabalenka, and she does seem to be cruising. Uh, what was this score that uh, Ghosty was predicting like a long well, while I think ago? He said straight sets, and it certainly. Yeah, I it was like six four six three or six three six four. I mean, six three six four is still possible, right? Yeah. Six three six four, yeah. So if, if Rogers wins three more games, yeah, yeah. Even if Sabalenka won, she'd have to get one break at least, though, right? Uh, Nine one. Yeah, she she does have to. Yeah, I tried right. to attack Iga's serve, punish her on the second serves, and try to get into her head. Iga is weak at serve. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what a lot of players have been doing. Uh, I think um, there was a bit of a mo moment there, like with uh, Garcia in um, uh, in Warsaw, especially when if, esp on clay, you know, everyone, everyone, I think, thought that Iga's serve has improved so much, and then Garcia just comes in and destroys it. And I think since then we've seen a lot more players do that. And in a way, I think Garcia showed her that, showed them that it's possible. And then pretty much every every opponent since uh, Iga has played since that has this possibility that you know, that has the option of attacking the opponent's serve because of course Camila Osorio was not doing that yesterday, uh, but you know whoever Hadat Maya, Keys, Julie Meyer, uh, the, the opponents that actually could, uh, I think they they have done it against Iga and Sabalenka, Garcia, yeah. yeah, Sabalenka, yes, yeah, she's played, but Sabalenka as well since. Uh, Jaber in the final. Pegula, especially, oh, at the United Cup, she she just totally crashed it. And that's why I think it's going to be pretty hard for Iga to win the Australian Open. She she tends to struggle against all these players who have a bigger serve than her and at the same time can punish uh, her serve. The players that just make the game about the serve and the return uh, and, and not about the baseline rallies in which she thrives, when she, especially when she can control the points with her forehand. Volniets has a break point uh, in the first game of the third set and... Uh... I can see that uh, Ghosty is surprised that Volniets is competing um, so well against Kudamatova. That's really nip and tuck into the third set there, uh, particularly if she was to get a break of serve at the beginning. That would give her a slight advantage, of course. Uh, Taylor Townsend, meanwhile, is a break up in the third. So she's um, regained things there, shall we say, against Alexandrova. Uh, no, Alexandrova's just broken back. Uh, anyway, so they are back on serve. Uh, Jeremy Shardy is down two sets to love to Dan Evans, 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. wonder if we're going to see the same kind of symmetry there that we saw yesterday. Who, who was it who won 6-4, six, 6-4? Four, six, four, six, Grigsburg. Four. Grigsburg against Van der Zandt. Uh So that was that. Uh, loads of doubles ac action occurring, including today, Krejcikova and Siniakova. They are currently warming up for their first round match. Uh, Kudla Umberg to come on the single side. Oh, and Sam Stoser played her last uh, doubles match uh, ah. in her career. She's also going to play the mixed with Matt Ebden. Uh, but I 
yeah, I guess I guess she got a pretty tough draw here with uh, with one of the Chan sisters in uh, in the opening round. She was playing with uh, Alize Cornet against the 11th seeds. They lost 3-6, 6-4. That was the last match Stosser will play in doubles, oh, women's doubles. And now she's going to play mixed doubles with Matt Ebden, where they should have a better shot at, uh, you know, at doing anything. I'm not sure if the draw for that is out yet, but I also don't think it matters that much. Mixed doubles tends to get quite random with how little the players actually, you know, not, they don't even practice I it. Think it's out. You play it. Yeah, it is out. It is out. I believe you're you're absolutely right. I'm gonna check where Stoser is in the draw in a second. Ghosty there saying he's. Uh, I don't know if this is just the fact that he's so good at predict predictions that he forgets them, but he said he'd forgotten about his uh, Sabalenka prediction. Yeah, they're, they're um, it's a pretty tough draw for for Stoser Abden as well. They're playing Demi Demi Schurz. I'm not sure how the you know how the Dutch woman's name is pronounced. And Nikola Mektic, so uh, one of the best doubles players in the world, both in you know both 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 the both on the women's side and the male and the men's side. So uh, it's going to be rough. I think Mektic just Mektic especially has won a few uh, mixed doubles snaps. Anyway, Sabalenka Rogers, there's two point two points away from victory. Yeah, I think uh, that, you know, Ghost, your, your prediction probably is going to be off by a few games. Uh, but I think you are per perfectly right about Sabanka winning this one somewhat easily. The first set, of course, were, was tight up until 3-3, three, three, but 3-0. Uh, but uh, we we were expecting a bit more trouble from Rogers there, for sure. Did she, did she make she that, that smash? I think she put I think it long. She, no, she made it. I think it, she, she made it, it yeah. But it, was, it, it wasn't that comfortable, of course. Who's your money on here with Davidovic for Kina, Tommy Paul? Uh, are we going towards Davidovic for Kina right now or um, sticking with Tommy Paul? I went for Tommy Paul at the beginning, so. At the beginning, I was uh, Tommy Paul in five, if I have to be honest. That was my <laughs> prediction uh, with the beginning. And I think that for how the match is going, I can still I can still say, say this as my prediction. Now, Tommy Paul... Uh, uh, had a break point because Davidovic Fokina has just saved this break point and um, but um, definitely this third set looks uh, uh, way uh, closer than the, the first two sets because they uh, both have already had some some chances to to break and not taken and uh, so yeah we are two all and 40 all so uh, Closer than this for now, it's not impossible. Why Sabalenka has closed this match, winning 11 out of the last 12 games against Shelby Rogers 6 3, 6 1. Sabalenka is in the third round of the Australian Open. There we go. Very, very comfortable in the end. A very, very um, good match, I have to say. Uh, some troubles in the beginning, some, some mistakes with the forehand at the beginning, but after that. Uh, it was a very, very convincing performance from Sabalenka, in my opinion. Yep, indeed. Uh, she wins 6 3, 6 1. She'll be giving her on court interview in a second. She just blew a kiss to the camera. Um, and Shelby Rogers there, in the end, a bit disappointing. As you say, losing 11 games out of 12. Couldn't handle um, uh, Sabalenka in the end, and Sabalenka remained consistent. And to be honest with you, my prediction of having her win the title continues to look okay let's say okay uh talking of predictions uh let's see how kudamatova is getting on because that is of course jack's prediction to make the final hello 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 what's going on with kudamatova she is down a break in the deciding set two games to love uh she's even loved 15 oh she's loved 15 on her own serve uh, sorry, no, yeah, she's um, threatening to break again. Well, threatening, love 15, if that's a threat, I don't know. Uh, Sabalenka, like I say, has cleaned up. Books be rude to come. Uh, we will keep you across all of these matches, but once Davidic Fakina uh, and um, Paul. Paul, Tommy Paul finish, we will be ending this stream. The guys can then relax, uh, watch a bit of tennis without having to continuously talk. <laughs> And uh, by the way, Ghost, I've got my um, talking tennis mug out. I've decided to make myself a tea just to keep me going for the next hour or so. 
before Davidic for Keno and Tommy Paul finish. By the way, no Davidic for, for Keno and Tommy Paul. We could be here for another two or three hours. But we will see. We will be back on your screens, though, just a matter of hours later. Uh, while well, the guys chill out and I probably get a few hours sleep. Uh, some people will be here, not myself, unfortunately, but you will have Damien and Mario talking about Kokinakis and Andy Murray. Are they on um, Rod Laver, by the way? My God, of course. Okay, good. So Djokovic is on Rod Laver? Yeah. Okay, cool. So there's a chance those two matches could be on at the same time. More, yeah. More it's again, yeah, it's, it's actually scheduled like that, right? Oh, is it? Uh, Djokovic first. Ah, yeah, sorry. Djokovic yeah, Djokovic first. 9 a.m. It, was, it yeah. was yesterday where they had like uh, you know, the two matches, uh, the two women's matches in the first slot. And then, yeah. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to bring you up to speed about was, of course, uh, Volinets going up a break against Kudermetova and now having two break points. Uh, to have a double break lead in the in the third set, which uh, yeah would be one of the bigger shocks of the event, and definitely a bit of a letdown for Kudermetova, who's made her well, she's made her name uh, in 2022 by just being super consistent and yeah beating lower rank players pretty much any time. Um, then maybe not necessarily you know winning. Uh, well, she I don't think she won a title, but she she made a few finals, but. Uh, you know, losing to top opposition, but getting through everyone else. That's that's what she's known for. And this time she might not even be able to do that, which would be very disappointing for, for her. Um, yeah, the draw will look pretty interesting. Yeah, the draw will open up a lot there because we've got uh, we've got Kasatkina out there as well. And I believe this is a section with Karolina Pliskova. So maybe, uh, maybe there is a chance, yeah. I've I mean, got. She's not, but I've got the third round uh, up on my screen right now mm -hmm. for the women's because that's yeah, what you're talking about, right? Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah. No um, so yeah, uh, I will just confirm some of these, and I've put them on the on the screen as well on YouTube, so you guys can all see it uh, out or wherever you're viewing in from. Uh, Ghosty, they're complimenting my mug. Thank you very much. Uh, but back to the schedule uh, for the third round. Uh, let us know in the live chat what you think about some of these matchups. Sviontek is going to play Buxa. Ribikina, Daniel Collins. It's not getting any easier for the 13 seed. I think she's had a pretty rough draw, to be honest with you. Um, but she keeps on plowing on through. Bindel Ostapenko uh, will be in action as well. This is all happening tomorrow, by the way. These are round three matches on the women's side. Pera against Coco Goff. Coco Goff, of course, beating Emma Raducanu in straight sets. Uh, yesterday, I think it was, uh, Pagula against Kostyuk. That's an interesting one. Potential banana skin there, I would suggest, for the American. Krajcikova, my tip to make the final. By the way, for my predictions, if I had no clue, I went Ukrainian. Uh, so I, I didn't really have a clue, really, about some Ukrainians. So I just tipped them to go through. So I've got Kostyuk, and I think I... Oh, no, I had Kostyuk going at the first round because I thought I had a clue with that one, but my clue was completely wrong. Um, anyway, Krejcikova, who's in my final against the Ukrainian Kalinina. Uh, Keys is playing Azarenka. Um, give me a tip for that one, uh, Mario. Keys or Azarenka? Tomorrow. Uh... For what I I just saw, I think that it's gonna be a very very close match. Um, I want to check the head to head before check the head to head, and I'll um have a quick uh, thirty seconds on it. I'm going as a renka, and I'm going as a renka. Yeah, the renka is always because of her form against Keys. Three lot. Okay, there we go. So I'm going Azarenka, but actually, I had Azarenka going out in the first round to Kenin. So you might be going, John, you turncoat, you're, you're switching and changing your predictions around. Indeed, I am. I'm doing it. There's kind of two predictions with a Grand Slam because it lasts for two weeks and seven matches if you go all the way to the final. You've got the pre-tournament prediction, if you like, which is based on current form. Mm -hmm. You look at how they're getting on in that country. You look at fitness. You look at history and so on and so forth. And you look at the draw. Well, And then there's a kind of a post-draw prediction, but there's also a a moment where you're into rounds three or four and you're going, boy, oh boy, I think now Medvedev is looking much better than I thought. Give me your thoughts on Keys Azarenka. Okay, I was checking a bit of uh, things. They played recently even in Guadalajara, um, 2022. Um, yeah, Zarenka looked good in the first two rounds because uh, the Kenin match was not so easy. Kenin was finding some form recently. Uh, but uh, after um, yeah, some rough moments uh, in uh, in her match, but still able to uh, 
to avoid the problem of going free. Uh, mm, come on, this, come on, give me, give me okay, a give I, me name. Okay, I I give you Azarenka. Okay, for his one. Great, makes sense. Um, go on, go on. David. I already made like a, a bit of a um, tip for for a website for this uh, for this match, and I also picked Azarenka. I have to say, I'm a little surprised that Ghosty doesn't trust Keys in slams because, well, she's had a lot of good she's had a lot of good rounds. Yeah, she, I think she's consistently getting uh, getting good results in slams. But I, I I also think that Azarenka is probably the slightly more likely winner. Yeah, all the matches up, uh, even if it's free zero in the head to head. You know, when I heard that, I was just thinking Azarenka. Renka probably won it in like 2005, 15, 14, but it's not really the case. Uh, the, the first match was in 2018. Uh, but in general, something that I have to say about Azarenka, otherwise, other than the fact that I think her return, which is probably her breast shots, could, could give her a huge advantage in this one. Uh, I have to say that I think in recent years, it's, uh, you know, she's not going to be super high up in the rankings. She's, she's had a lot of withdrawals, retirements. Uh, generally, not not always is able to compete uh, is able to compete to her best uh, standard. But whenever she actually can, I think she's been pretty much excellent any time um, throughout the past, you know, two or three years. So I I, I do think that she's probably uh, significantly underranked compared to where her actual playing playing strength is on her best day still. And yeah, I, I I really like her chances in this one. I think she's of course of course she's also much less erratic than. Um, than uh, as than Keith is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we've got Zhu against Sakari as well. Uh, that is yeah, also the same section of the draw. Okay. Uh, of Azarenka Keith. Indeed. And so with Sabalenka beating Rogers. I'm telling this now. I Go think on. that uh, for the way Azarenka plays, Keith and maybe Sakari is not that bad uh, for her. Uh, among the top seats. I think that probably um, Sakari is one of the the most favorable matchups for uh, uh, for Azarenka. For example, uh, I would say um, uh, Pegula. I would find pretty pretty difficult for her because of the way Pegula uh, hits in the rally, makes um, um, uh, hits the ball very flat, uh, so um, finding more angles. Uh, um, probably Sakari's games is um, is not so bad for a, for a player like uh, like Azarenka. So I think that her draw is not so uh, so bad as it may may seem. You know, it's still uh, very difficult to go through through Madison Keys, which is a, a two time Australian Open semi finalist. Um, but yeah, Azarenka usually finds her game pretty pretty well on on this on this court and in the Australian Open so I I cannot trust her at least to 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 give us some very very close battles against uh, Madison Keys and if she she wins uh, also against Maria Sakkari in my opinion Kosti is asking whether do you all have the concept of a tournament Cinderella in European sports we Yanks would say the Bolognese is trying to become an AO Cinderella I don't think it's particularly uh, common, but I think we sometimes describe something as a Cinderella story. I don't know, you know, uh, if that originates from uh, the Cinderella men. So, uh, what was the name? James E. Braddock, I think, the the, the, the boxer. But uh, uh, probably his, uh, you know, his nickname originated from the story. Uh, but yeah, I think I, I think we I think we are pretty familiar with the with the phrase. I remember writing an article when Victor <laughs> Estrella Burgos retired and calling him the tennis uh, Cinderella or something. Um, I watch with I watch Sakari with anybody. She's so entertaining. Yeah, that's why you enjoyed uh, the Schneider match, I guess. <laughs> as, 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 you, as you said, as you said, uh, she was maybe not at her best yet there, but yeah, there is some hope for the next of the for the remainder of the tournament. And you also said that Vikas actually won slams. Yes, but you know she's won slams 2012, 2013. She was also, I think, in the U.S. Open final 2013. But since then, uh, yeah, since then uh, she was. Uh, since then, she's basically just threatened to win one slam, right? So I don't think since then her pedigree has been that much, you know, that much better than Keys. Just seeing Casper Ruud there on the TV, of course, him and Rafa were gallivanting off around Latin America in November. And I just wonder if they might have both been better off um, chilling and relaxing 
rather than ta partaking in that. Listen, those of you watching, by the way, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And you can always imitate Ghosty and Jane in the way that they've generously given to the channel in recent days. Uh, so feel free by doing a super chat uh, in that respect. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, so we are going to be flipping around the channels now. We will be with you for another hour or so, depending on how Davidovich, Fakina, and Tommy Paul goes. We'll be with you until the end of that match. And then we will bid you adieu until uh, we will return uh, a few hours later for um, Andy Murray against Kokinakis. We may well cover a bit of Djokovic as well and whatever matches are still ongoing. So Volnietz is up three love in the third. What is going on, Gosi? Us? Yeah, now 3-1. 3-1. Mm -hmm. Just turn it up for us. Okay, yeah, cool. Okay, now we're watching Thank it on, on the main screen. And while this third set is pretty exhausting also to watch uh, because it's really, really close and tight. Every game is a hard fought battle again, uh, between Davidovic, Fokina and Tommy Paul. Um, so why not? Probably um, this set is going is going to be uh, very very important and crucial to to the player who who wins this because uh, after this great um, this great fight, even in in every single game with a lot of deuce moments and some break points. It can be very, very, very important for uh, one of those two players to to take the the advantage. Kudamatova, by the way, has got one of those breaks back. It's now three one because she was a double breakdown at three love, but she's got one of those breaks back. She's now serving at fifteen all. She was just curious about her own ball toss there. She threw the ball up into the air a few times, maybe struggling to see it in the searing sun. That's the third time I've used the word searing on this stream. I will try not to use it again, but you never know. Searing could just, oh, there we go, slip out of the mouth as it did just then. By the way, Ghosty, uh, with this comment earlier, giving us the rundown on Volnietz, of course, Volnietz uh, from the US. Volnietz is 21 years old. She went pro in 2018. Highest ranking in the singles is 109. Two ITF titles, but no word if she's got a condo in Brasilia or not. Very good. Um, if she does live a, a hangout in Brasilia and she's a construction worker, we'll know that she's probably not downtown and that she'll be in a favela somewhere. Um, Kudamatova now has two game points, so perhaps there's been a momentum shift there. We've got that on the big screen. Of course, many of you are wondering, how many screens do you have? We have three screens, basically. Uh, I could get a fourth screen up, but I'm too busy uh, checking in on Ghosty's comments in the live chat to do so and others. Make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Um, how is Davidic Fakina and Tommy Paul getting on, Mario? And uh, That's another close game because uh, another um, rough moment for the guy who's serving. And now Tommy Paul is on serve and 15.30 so, and down 3-4. So... Uh, Davidovic Fokina has, uh, has a small chance to, to try to, uh, to gain uh, an important uh, oh, what a volley and Davidovic Fokina finds the forehand passing shot so 15-40 uh, two break points and if Davidovic Fokina takes one of these two points then he can serve to, to close the third set. It's a game point for Kudumatova, so we've got some sort of um, normality resuming there in that match. Let's stick with Davidovic for Kina and, for, uh, and Tommy Paul. I was nearly going to say Davidovic and for Kina, but that's just one person. Um, <laughs> we'll come back to that in a second. I've got a quick question for you, Damien. Are the Dunlop balls really that big a deal? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, it seems like that a lot of the players have been talking about them, uh, that about the fact that there's basically no bounce. Well, of course, the, the, there's always a bounce, but the, the, that the bounce is really low. And I think that's the, that's the big deal. Uh, the, that's probably also because of the fact that they don't take spin that well. So they, you know, they, they, they want, um, it seems like the, the, the players who do hit with, uh, some, you know, hit flatter strokes, should have an advantage. Their low bouncing shots get even more low bouncing. Uh, I think it's been a factor in some matches already. Uh, like Isner Manarino, maybe the, the, maybe the bigger factor was actually the you know, Isner injuring himself. I think it was, it was the back. Uh, but but in general, I think there's there's been a lot of matches where it's been a factor. I think um, tomorrow as well, maybe we could see the impact of that in. Uh, 
what was the match that I was thinking about that we could see it in? I don't know now. Um, <laughs> but I, I remember there being a match where I thought that that was going to be that was going to be hugely important. But anyway, yeah, uh, I think you know whenever there's a change, uh, we we can see that some some players benefit from that, some players don't, and uh, perhaps also in the matches like uh, Felix with Molchan, the, you know he won or Senk Popirin. Uh, we can see now. Now on our screen, we can actually see that Stos, it's Stosur's, uh, you know, farewell in the women's doubles. Farewell. Yeah, but uh, even uh, you know, the, the the biggest example, of, of course, of balls was the U.S. Open, where the, the women play with completely different balls than uh, than males, and we've seen some players struggle there, like Muguruza, Barty. Uh, Barty, Barty, I think especially she was very. Uh, she was always criticizing these balls. She won't take as well last year before she won. Before she won New York. <laughs> yeah, and also. listen, we have to go over to Davidovich for Kina. Tommy, we have Paul. a break. Yes, we do. Tell me. We have a break with a great uh, back and return from Davidovich for Kina and forcing. Uh, uh, Tommy Paul's mistake, and so now there's a, a big advantage because. Uh, uh, Davidovich Fokina can serve uh, for the set and, and and can serve to to try to to have a two sets to one lead, which can be really really important uh, because uh, of, of course um, uh, two sets to one advantage is a, is a big thing because you you just need to win once one more set and you're open in two of course and so. Um, yeah, let's see how this game goes because uh, we are already love 15. Um, yeah, got, got a question for you from Jane. I don't know if you saw uh, Tommy Paul do his his pirouette. Uh, in other words, Tommy Paul sort of did this. I think I think that's a pirouette, something like that, uh, which he found very amusing. I don't know if you, I don't know if you found it equally amusing. I don't think Tommy Paul is particularly amused though right now because of course he's a breakdown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have to say that in uh, Tommy Paul is uh, I I enjoy watching Tommy Paul, um, but yeah, he just like Davidovich Fokina, it's the same main issue for both of them. They uh, they need to find more consistency uh, in their game, and also they 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 usually have uh, a lot a lot of ups and downs during the match. For example. Um, I uh, for how the match went, I'm probably expecting the winner of this set closing it in four. But for example, I wouldn't be uh, surprised if Tommy Paul, for example, gives a six-one to Davidovich Fokina in the fourth set because um, that's how this match is is going. So, so yeah, let's see. I'm not even sure if Davidovich will close this game. Uh, we are 15 all, and we are engaged in a very, very long rally. And the back end is in the net, so 15:30, and and it's another, another um, tight moment uh, in this third set. Uh, in basically every game, there have been chances for for the uh, the player who was who was returning. Uh, Volnitz held to love, so very impressive from her. She now has a 4-2 lead. Uh, Volnitz, that is, who is 21 years old. I'm just looking for the stats from Ghosty. Um, uh, anyway, she's 21 years old, but we don't know whether she has a uh, an apartment or not, or a condo or not, in um, Brasilia, the capital of Brazil. Uh, 4-2, anyway, it is to the American. Uh, and she also has Love 15 on her opponent's serve. Kudumatova is serving at 2-4. Uh, what is happening, just quickly, with Javadich Fakina? and um, 30 all. Okay. So let's see how this point uh, this point goes because uh, Davidovich Fogina is, is two points away uh, from taking this set. Um, the first serve is in, and, uh, back in the cross court, and Tommy Paul uh, is still in the rally. Davidovich Fogina has an advantage in this rally and try to hit this back and a, a lob. Uh, <laughs> another funny rally here. Um, now the situation is pretty even between the two players, and Davidovich Fokina is again into the net, and net court, and it's out. Very lucky net court, despite what Jensen Brooks can say. Uh, so we are a break point. Break point, break Tommy point. Paul. 
Break point for Tommy Paul. Yeah. How's Jeremy Shardy getting on against Dan Evans? Yeah, not great. Uh, one five down in the deciding set. Uh, not deciding set. Well, <laughs> the third <laughs> set. The third set, and Evans is two points away from victory. Uh, yeah, it's gone progressively worse. Yeah, but but still, of course, winning a match and getting so much playtime is still is still a win for Shardy. Uh, of course, coupled with the Galan match, I mean. Why is Jane such a big fan of Davidovich Vakina? I don't know if it's because she dislikes Tommy Paul, given the pirouettes from the American, probably less so. By the way, uh, Tommy Hall Paul has saved that break point, so it's now deuce. Uh, Davidovich Vakina is saved. Did I say Tommy Paul? I meant Davidovich Vakina, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he saved that uh, break point, and so now it's back to deuce. Um, let's see what happens there. Let me know. Uh, Mario, if there's a game point, yeah, yeah, the point uh, is just ended in my screen, so, okay. Um, so yeah, we are deuce. Davidovich Fukina is again uh, two points away from winning the set, um, now he's uh, he's bouncing the ball, ready to serve. Um, here, Kudermetova is in a bit of a trouble. Yeah, 1530. 40. 1540 now. 1540 yeah. now for a double break. You can go back to your your bigging up uh Volniet's uh, talk go ghosty. No uh no need to keep calm on her. You can go back to bigging her up again, especially if she gets a double break here. She is edging closer and closer to knocking out Jack's prediction for the Australian Open final. Hmm. Set point here, second set, serve set for point, Davidovich Fokino. Mm -hmm. Um Okay, so a good second serve, and now try to hit a backhand uh, and cross good forehand in the net. So uh, it's not it's not finished this, this third set. We we are deuce again. While Kudermetova has just saved the first of the two break points she had to face. And then Evans has just kicked out Jeremy Shardy out of the tournament. Uh, uh, there's a handshake between the umpire and Shardy. Okay. But there are also some words uh, still, you know, being uh, thrown at each other. Between Dan Evans as well or Dan Evans? No, no, just... Evans is just celebrating the win. Yeah. And uh, Dan Evans now awaits uh, Rublev or Rusuwari in the third okay. round. Uh, meanwhile, here we have uh, uh, a second break point for Tommy Paul. Because uh, he attacked very, very well when with his backhand, and so uh, the the disparate lob hit from Davidovich Fokina has went wide, and so we we have another break point. A good return, I have to say, from Tommy Paul and Davidovich Fokina. Mistake, mistake from the the forehand side. So. Uh, uh, Paul has saved the set point and he's broken back. Wow, 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 wow. Back on serve uh, now in that match. Uh, ben Shelton about to get underway against Jari. Uh, any thoughts on that match, uh, Damien? Ben Shelton, Nick Jari? Uh, Jari? They're going to serve <laughs> and that's going to be the main, main factor, I think. Uh, I'm afraid that Ben might lose this, honestly. Uh, you know, Jari was pretty dominant in his first round against Kitsmanovic. Definitely better than in the qualifying. And I don't know. It just feels like an like a good opportunity for a youngster who is still definitely lacking experience, but not talent, to you know flop after after a good win over Zhang. I do hope. I, you know, I I just really hope that Ben progresses because well, he's the promising player there, of course. Uh, but I, I do think that it is a banana skin for him and not surprised yeah, that, that he's just a slight favorite for the bookmakers as well. Uh, Ekaterina Alexandrova, by the way, uh, has a match point over Taylor Townsend in the, in the okay. third set now. Uh, it, it is on return, but if, uh, if Townsend holds, Alexandrova will still have a chance to serve it out. So yeah. uh, she is very close and uh, we've got another pressure point involved. <laughs> it's Kudermetova, Deuce, at 2-4 down. Let's maybe see what, what what's gonna happen here. Brooks being rude out on the court, by the way. There's a second serve for the Russian. Rude was about to win the first game last I saw, 40 15. Forehand to forehand at the moment. This is I'm talking volume. That's a bit of a drama on Instagram. 
Go between on. Novak Djokovic and Eurosport. Oh, uh, she oh, posts just quickly. Alexandrova has knocked yeah, out yeah. Taylor Tansen. Go on, go back to the Eurosport Djokovic drama. Yeah, Djokovic has just posted um, in on Eurosport Twitter? on uh, no on Instagram stories uh, okay. a Eurosport uh, video saying uh, Eurosport, please get your information checked before you post something judgmental and wrong. And in the the Insta story. Um, the next uh, story, he said, Chair Empire allowed me to go to the toilet, but she told me I don't have toilet break, just change over break. So she told me uh, I had to hurry up. When I almost uh, exited the court, she called me, and it was to tell me that toilet was on the opposite side of the court. I found one uh, where I went also, and I had to be quick because of the time. I didn't defy her on the rules. She gave me permission and told me to be quick. Next time, be mindful with that with what you post. You have a responsibility towards many sports fans that follow your page. Okay, does seem a bit. Um, I don't know what happened to be honest with you. I don't even know what the original incident was. Yeah, basically, she she took a, a, a toilet break, but it was not a toilet break. Just a, a, she went out uh, of the court uh, during the the ninety seconds of the changeover. Uh, and probably the, uh, the Eurosport page made uh, just a bit of a clickbait drama about that, uh, uh, as usual, I have to say. So, yeah. There we go. Uh, anyway, uh, here we have a juice number three between Volnietz and Kudamatova. Uh, it's looking good, though, for Kudamatova, and she's uh, now got an advantage and a game point. Uh, Dan Evans has just knocked out Jeremy Shardy. Was it 646464, by the way? No, it's one. Ah, there we go. Um, anyway, that won't matter. Dan Evans is through. Uh, Shardy is out. Bit of a drama in the first set. Shardy was up a break, wasn't he, in that first set as well, right? I think he was right at the beginning of the match. I think he broke Dan. Didn't he break Dan Evans and then broke and Evans broke Dak? Didn't Evans break back when the ball fell out? No, that was that was at 3 3. Uh, three oh, okay. Um, okay. I'm not sure. Casper Ruud is held anyway, so he's up one love. Uh, no, we... no, simply okay. Evans had the break yeah. and then Shardy broke Shardy back broke okay. and Evans broke again. Fair enough. If only it's Kuruma Tova, yeah. this game is... Got another deuce. It's nine minutes already. Yeah. I'm going to turn on Shelton Jari, by the way, probably. And Do that. In turn an on hour, Shelton I Jari. also have a challenger match to watch. So I'm not sure how I'm going to juggle that, but I'm going to figure something out. Oh, I can watch it on my phone, I guess. Volnets and Kudermitova deuce. And Kudermitova, of course, is about, about to serve. That wasn't it. Wow. Mm -hmm. My eyesight is getting progressively worse as the, as the week goes on. No doubt. Uh, Rublev and Rusevoy just started as well. Rusevoy serving, love 15. Uh, as you say, and Shelton and Jarry about to get underway. Kudermitova makes a double fault. So and it's a uh, double deuce. fault from Kudermitova, so it's a break point now for Volnietz for what would be a mini-match point with a double break advantage. Yeah, Ghosty also caught on to that uh, Jags bracket Kudermitova story. Okay. He's it now a couple of times. We're going to mention it even yeah, more. Yeah, there's there's that there's that break chance for for Volnets that he also that he also commented on. Now uh, we'll see if Kudermetova can find the first serve this time. She does, but there there's got there's gonna be a point from this. Although she still has the upper hand, though hitting the forehand pretty well. Oh, that was that's a, not a great no, approach. Oh, it's even worse yeah. compounded by that. Yeah, there was a lot of nerves in that point. Kudermetova just hit an approach down the middle that wasn't even particularly deep. Then Volnets just gave her back the, back the ball, basically. Uh, that was a very weak pass, passing shot attempt. But yeah, Kudermetova missed uh, a volley that I would have probably made. So <laughs> let's uh, let's see what's going to happen after this. But uh, Volnets is going to serve for the match at least twice. By the way, uh, a few times... I, I would say last year there were a few players in the WTA Top 10 that were... We're consistently getting into the quarterfinals, semis, but not winning titles, not beating top opposition. I would say that was Pegula, Goff, Kudermetova, Kasatkina. And we already see a huge contrast in how they're performing in 2023, right? Uh, some of them are, are stepping up. Pegula, what she did at the United Cup. Goff getting a title already, beating Raducanu yesterday. And then we have Kudermetova and Kasatkina. But I actually thought that Kudermetova was going to, like, be uh, you know again in the near the top ten uh, in 2023 maybe at at the year end we'll see that that of course cannot be excluded I do think Kasatkina might fall off a bit though 
she had a she had a top ten finish I think already once back in the day or maybe just was in the top ten for a yeah, moment. Yeah, she was uh, in twenty eighteen. She was yeah. number ten. Yeah, but was it was it uh, at the year end as well or hmm? was it at at, at, mm. the, at the year end as well? I'm not sure, but but uh, anyway, she, for yeah, sure she, for she sure was, she, she wasn't uh, in. The WTA finals. No, she was not in the WTA finals. I think she was in Zhuhai, but that does not mean much. Well, you know, in that uh, WTA Elite Trophy, but uh, that doesn't mean much. But yeah, Kazatkina, I think I, I thought could fall off uh, a bit this year. I think she overperformed uh, last year. Could yeah, in 2018, her? she she ended the she season. She ended the year at uh, ten, right? Yeah. Number ten. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I figured. Uh, but yeah. Both her and Kudermetova are not looking that great to start the season. They haven't made, at least they haven't made that step up. And of course, Kasatkina winning just two games against Gracheva was shocking. They did play pretty well in the events uh, beforehand, though, before the Australian Open. But Kudermetova withdrew before the, uh, what was it, Adelaide semis? Or, um, yeah, Adelaide semis, uh, the second event. And in the first, she lost to Begu, which was a pretty bad loss. Of course, Kasatkina got smashed by Benchic in the Adelaide 2 final. And yeah, just they it looks like they will both have just very disappointing Australian Open campaigns, especially with how much the draw has opened up for Kudermetova, also because of Kasatkina's withdrawal, uh, withdrawal uh, loss. Yeah, and there's uh, Volinets two points away from winning the match. Kudermetova just made a, made a back to the error. Um, yeah, no, no, no worries, Ghosty. You can just, you know, not look at the comments when, uh, when there's, when there's a point, uh, there's an important point or something. Um, we actually, you didn't, you didn't even spoil it for us because I don't think we're looking <laughs> at the comments at that point anyway. Um, but you, you, you probably are uh, a little bit ahead. Uh, we've, we've had that all week that all the viewers are <laughs> are ahead of us, and all the all the other guys who tuned in. Uh, I mean, like Jack, Isabel, or, or someone, they, they're also ahead of us. Oh, Kudermetova has a couple of smashes to try yeah, to win that old. point, and it's fairly all. But of course, falling that's still two points away. Uh, Ghost, he's entertaining to watch. He's a weirdo, so much emotion like Andre. It's not the little ponytail. I guess it's about Davidovich Fokina, uh, guessed by the ponytail. Volinets to serve, 30 all. I think she did land that, and Kudermetova, uh, perhaps surprised by the depth of that serve because it was just right on the line. 127 kilometers uh, an hour, by the way, but but yeah, right on the line, and Kudermetova didn't handle it um, at the body. So Volinets has a match point. Yeah, the serve is <laughs> wow. And Katie Volinets is basically serving her first serves at like 120, 115 an hour. Right? 114 was. Yeah, 114 was, was kilometers an hour, which would be like uh, 70 miles per, miles per hour. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, Sarah Rani levels right now. But... And Tommy Paul, after saving a set point, uh, is now putting pressure on Davidovich Fokina because he, he has a break point uh, on the 5 all game. Yeah, Volinets is definitely struggling to hold up with the, with the tension right now. There was another 120, uh, 120 first serve, and uh, she she did miss hit a forehand right after that. By the way, we've got break points galore now. Uh, although actually, um, Davidovich Fakin has just saved the break point. Yeah. Uh, we've got a break point here with Volinets trying to serve this out to a five-two up, but she's facing a break point against Kudamatova. Okay, Kudamatova, forehand return, goes pretty big on that. They're going forehand to forehand. Now it's on the backhand of Volniets, forehand uh, moon ball there. It's not good enough, though, from Kudamatova. Nevertheless, still very much in the rally. Backhand slice from Kudamatova. And now Volniets comes into the match. No, it's not. Of course it's not. It's juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting my break points and my match points muddled up there. No one would realize that I've been watching tennis for almost 40 years. Nevertheless, it's 5 to Volniets. And is by the way, serving. in the meantime, we've had Nicolas Jari breaking in the opening game against okay. Shelton, but Shelton did double fault on uh, 15 40 points. So ah. uh, he did not have to take the break point there. Taking a leaf out of. Um, yeah, we've got another mishit forehand from Volniets, but this time it goes in. Yeah. 
there's really a lot of pressure on them both Indeed. right now. Indeed. Forehand slice, backhand slice, backhand slice into the net. So it's now match point number two for Volniets. Four minutes and 35 seconds on the clock for this game alone. Of course, we did have a, a game a couple of games ago, which was about 10 minutes, I think it was. Anyway, um, advantage Volniets, match point for the American for uh, a mini upset. Tommy That's Paul. Not. Yeah, Tommy That's Paul. That's not Deutsch a mini team. upset, though. I no? think the odds were like eight to one. To big minutes. upset then. Yeah, it's like massive. I, there, there definitely wasn't anything like that yet at the Australian Open, okay. which doesn't make sense. Like, on, Juice. you know, on a uh, realistically, it does not make sense. Like, this is very. This was very optimistic. I think in terms of Kudermetova, she's just yeah. I just don't think she's that kind of you know caliber of a player to to be that sort of favorite. to be getting to a Grand Slam final. You mean like Jack says? Um, <laughs> you know, with the, with the draw she had, I mean, she's shown that she's capable of, of doing that. I guess Ma McDonald Nadal. This is this is the only comparable um, upset. Okay. In terms of the odds, yeah. But I even think that was probably a little bit generous for Nadal, really, in that um, there, there was some vulnerability for Nadal. I don't know, you know. If he beats Draper, right, we all thought that yeah, he's true. just going to beat McDonald. Match point number three, Volnietz, uh goes down the tee. Forehand return is decent, but it's not good enough in a way. Uh, backhand now down, approaching the net, Volnietz. It's a volley from her. Is it good enough to win the point? It is. Game, set, match for the American. 6-2, she wins that final set. Now she can buy that condo in Brasilia, so. <laughs> yes, but I'll tell you, someone who won't be buying it for her will be Jack. Is speed that important on surf if you're kicking, kicking your opponent 10 feet off the court? If, if someone's returning like Kudermetova, then no. <laughs> uh, but of course, you could, you, know, you could step into the court, you could take it before it's, uh, it ends up bouncing over your head, that's for, that's for sure. And it's also not giving you any advantage, right? If you're kicking, if you're kicking or uh, like that, like like Volinets was with uh, like 150 an hour, an hour, it's just not giving you any advantage. And then serve is supposed to give you an advantage. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she was starting the rallies from neutral after that, so I guess it wasn't that terrible. At least in this match, at least against this opponent, at least against an opponent who was very, uh, yeah, just very nervous as well. So, Volniets through Kudermatova out. Uh, she joins Sabalenka in round three. Sabalenka beating Shelby Rogers very comfortably today. Um, I thought that might be a bit closer. I thought it would be two tight sets or maybe even go three. But I was wrong. Um, somebody in the live chat, Ghosty, of course, predicted that it would be very comfortable for um, for Sabalenka. And it was. Uh, Davidish Fakina and... Um, Toby Paul, anything but comfortable for either player, really? Yeah. Yeah, uh, this was a very, very tough uh, third set for both of them, physically and mentally. Davidovic Fokina had a set point up five, uh, um, three or four. Uh, he was uh, uh, certainly serving for. Uh, for the set because he, uh, yeah, five three. Uh, he had uh, um, he had a break and he was uh, broken back. Uh, but now Paul is 30-15 up on his serve, and so he's uh, two points away from forcing a, a tiebreak in this third set. And probably for what we've seen, uh, it would be um, the fairest uh, end for, uh, for this very, very uh, hard-fought third set. Yeah, and Shelton has broken right back. Um, Jari's ground game has been even more shaky than usual so far. So, uh, yeah, at least he's not uh, behind the break so far. And, yeah, Shelton looks to be cruising towards a halt in the third game of the match. Uh, what else do we have right now? Brooksby and Rude, right? But they're, they're still pretty it's much... On serve at the beginning of the... Yeah, yeah. they're We're still pretty much Rublev is already a double break up on Rusuwari in the first set, three all, uh, three love, and now he has to serve, so he can uh, lock uh, this first uh, uh, set. Really, yeah, no, no women's matches going on right now, but they're going to be up uh, shortly with mm, uh, Schwarzman. Uh, Schwarzman Linets. Wolf is beginning too. Yeah, oh, mm. the Kontavet Linets, Davis, Mertens, they're 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 all going to be up shortly, I believe. Also, Schmidlova, Georgi, one. Ah, oh, no, Schmidlova, Georgi is going to be once Davidovich, Fokina, Paul finishes. So in five hours. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> According to Ghosty, this is Volniets' fifth match in 10 days. So she's had a fairly intense period. wonder if she'll run out of with steam. With qualifying. Right? Yeah, yeah, right, with qualifying. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um, well, but sometimes that can be an advantage, no, Damien? Yeah, for sure. Uh, although at slams, not, I, I think in general at slams, it's probably not as important because you get to play, well, you get to play on Thursday, usually your last match, and then the, the main draw is on uh, Sunday or Monday. So I don't know if that becomes an advantage. But yeah, in especially in main tour events, I think when it's, uh, I don't know, uh, Sunday, you're playing on Saturday and Sunday in the qualities, then Monday or Tuesday, the main draw. Uh, in uh, the qualifier, a, a lot of the time has an advantage. In slam qualifying at Wimbledon, it's not an advantage because the qualifying is held at Roehampton, not not at, not at the Wimbledon courts. So, uh, so then it can't really be, uh, can't really help you. But yeah, you're, you're you're better used to the conditions, and maybe it's even actually better in slam qualifying because you get some so much rest. So these three matches aren't probably going to ruin your chances. Yeah, it going deep in slams. That's why in in regular events we don't get free free round qualifyings. Although sometimes I think on the WT or TA tour they used to do that, uh, but not anymore. I think also the Indian Wells maybe they have they had uh, it back in the day at Miami. So here is Contavate Lynette. Um, yeah. Okay. That's it. Um, uh, Ghost is suggesting that perhaps her interview skills, uh, I think she, he means Volnietz needs some, uh, some improvement. Well, I was going to actually tune in for that interview, uh, Ghosty, but maybe I'm glad I didn't. But listen, she plays tennis. We talk it. Uh, maybe you can analyze our abilities to either interview or receive an interview or get to give our insight. But um, if we are anything close to her ability on the tennis court, I'll be very, very happy. Uh, Rublev, Rusevori in action. It was a double break for Rublev, right? Yeah, last time I checked, yeah, it fine. was a double break. And 2-1, uh, uh, <laughs> Davidovic Fokina in the tie break. He has a mini break. We have breaking news, by the way, and it is that Damien has caved and he's put Brooksby against Rude up on the big screen. I saw That's him... just because Contavate Ninette is not yet... Okay, okay, so there's going to be a 10 minute break, yeah. I, I saw you sort of glaze over that earlier when we were looking at various matches to put on the big screen, although at that point as well, we had, I think, um, uh, Volnietz and Kudamatova a crucial moment in their match. But anyway, we have, for, the, for now, we've got Casper Rude against Brooks Beyond. Um, anyway, and it's on serve, um, perhaps somewhat predictably, in the first set. What's going on with Tommy Paul and Davidic Fakina? By the way, if there's an antithesis of this match, it's Tommy Paul, Paul against Davidic Fakina in terms of being a bit crazy. What's going on? Uh, two, two all in the tiebreak. So okay. for now, uh, yeah, Davidic Fakina was up too long. Uh, I know it was too early to, to, to think that he he had a, a good advantage in the tie break. In fact, uh, we are already to to all uh, in this yeah in this third set tie break. And I think that uh, this is going to be uh, the most uh, tense moment of this match because one set all and then you you go into a tie break. Uh, we we saw a lot of times that the the third set tiebreak can make a lot of difference uh, when the players are one set all and so yeah um, uh, three two by the way Davidovic Fokina has uh, has won this point and now Paul has two service points uh, to try the first one to try to to go to the changeover at three all. And uh, that's a good serve. And he comes to the net. And uh, Eva Davidovic Fokina finds a great forehand passing shot. So 4 2 at a changeover. That's, by the way, quite interesting. I mean, this has nothing to do with tennis, really. But the court announcers at the Australian Open and apparently in Adelaide as well have been using gender neutral pronouns for the players. Have been what, sorry? Have been using gender neutral pronouns. Okay, the so it's they, of... they instead of he, she. Oh, okay. We, 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 who are we talking about now? We're talking about uh, introductions. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, well, of course, you probably can't, you probably can't do that in most, in many European languages, at least. Excuse my European indulgence, ghosty. Um, but in English, of course, you can. There is a sort of a gender neutral alternative which is they okay so what when they're being introduced to the crowd Rafa Nadal and here he is 
they have won 22 grand slams. Yeah, it, it, it is weird. <laughs> I'm not exactly. Uh, but also, I think in Europe, we're generally not used to that yet. Like, you know, people um, you know, telling you what their pronouns are. It's way more common in the States, so maybe, or maybe in Australia as well, then apparently. Um, I think in Europe, we're, we're still a little behind uh, well, with that. And, you know, ghosty. Some think it's, it's good, some think it's bad. Rublev is up for love in the first set, and therefore he's positing the question Will Emil enjoy his Russian bagel? What uh, are you laughing at, at Ghosty, or are you laughing at something with Davidovich? No, no, I'm laughing about the comments. Uh, I think that's an uh, no one enjoys the bakery, the bakery in tennis. <laughs> no, and <laughs> no one, no one. <laughs> but I have got something to add, and that is obviously Russia and Finland. Uh, some geopolitics going on right now with uh, I believe Finland is joining NATO. I don't know if um. Uh, I think I'm right with Finland joining NATO, or maybe Finland already in it. Uh, Ghosty, you can let me know. I know there's a, one or two Scandinavian countries on the verge of joining, and I know that's upsetting Senor Putin. I don't know how he feels about being called Senor. But anyway, uh, I don't know if Rusevori is, is uh, enjoying his Russian bagel. I'm not sure. Uh, let me know in the live chat if you believe uh, Vladimir Putin is a fan of bagels. Would be good to know. Maybe we can send some across, courtesy of Talking Tennis. 6-3 here in the tiebreak for okay. Davidovich Fokina. So there are three set points. And, uh, of course, uh, that's the second set point because he, he had already one set point when he served to close the set. Uh, now we have three straight set points for him. Uh, that's a, a huge a huge chance to, to take the advantage in this match. Um a match, uh, according to, to someone, he was already done. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Davidovich Fikini was already done, Brian said. Brian has been very quiet since. I don't know whether he's gone off to have dinner or he's gone to bed or he's just a little bit embarrassed about saying it was done. I, well, I'm very curious, though, about Janie and, and her keenness on um, on Davidovich Fikini. Maybe she's an anti-Tommy Paul person. If that set gets concluded, let me know, Mario. Yeah. Damien, I said that that match was the antithesis of Brooksby and Rude, and you sort of went, hmm. Yeah, I, it... I, was just, I was just thinking about, you know, in which way. Um, Is it not a bit more crazy? Sort of in the crazy crazy against... Uh, Brooksby's yeah, unorthodox. Like the, the ultimate comparison. Yeah, but, but Brooksby is unorthodox, and that's why, that's why I was sort of thinking about it. Uh, it does look a bit like, you know, Root's forehand is just going to be such a major weapon in this matchup that Brooksby can't really handle. But I don't know. 6-4. Uh, we shall see. He, he's really been, you know, whenever he's able to just take that forehand and uh, go a little more aggressive with it, Brooksby can't really keep up so far from the points that we've watched. But we'll see. At least for now, he's keeping him in the backhand corner pretty well. This is a hell of a rally, this. Could well decide the set. We'll see. Exchanging backhands now, backhand slice and to do it with Kina goes quite deep, maybe not deep enough. Tommy Paul, the consistency is pretty impressive. Oh, oh wow. Right. Yeah, he, he seals the set with a great backhand winner. So 2 6, 6 2, 7 6. Davidovich Fokina has now a big advantage because it's two sets to one up in this. Uh, in this second round clash to play against Brooksby or Casper Ruud in the third round. So um, that's... Uh, we'll see. We'll see now if Davidovich Fokina has uh, an advantage also mentally, psychologically, and or if uh, um, Tommy Paul still manages to, to go to, to a fifth set. It, it, it's, still a, it's still a close battle, and so... Um, after having won this very close set in the tiebreak, I see Davidovich Fokina as uh, now as a clear favorite. But uh, we have already said that uh, it's <laughs> it's a match where uh, you you never can feel you never can feel safe making a prediction, and so I wouldn't be surprised if Tommy Paul bounces back. Yeah, so two players that are extremely happy about that Volinets Kudermetova score are Pliskova and Garcia. Uh, Pliskova, because, well, she plays Yulia Putintseva, which could be tough, honestly, for her in this form. But then she could uh, face, in the third round, Gracheva or Stefanini. And then, in the fourth round, uh, you know, if she gets there, she wouldn't have to play Kudermetova, but Volinets, Zhang, or Martic. 
Of course, both Shuai Zhang and Petra Martic. Oh, this was the matchup I was thinking about. Shuai Zhang, Petra Martic. That's one where I think the, uh, the Dunlop balls could make a lot of difference. Uh, because I think um, uh, yeah, Zhang, Zhang, Zhang's flat trajectory can be much tougher to face for Martic than, than it would usually. Like usually, I would I would have Martic as a as a favorite there, but Zhang is so good indoors and like whenever the, on grass, whenever the ball uh, bounces lower. And Garcia, well, she plays Fernandez, of course. Uh, but then we've got Begu or Ziegemund. That's a very favorable matchup. Perhaps some issues against Alexandrova, Kontaveit or Linette. But then she would get a very a nice quarterfinal opponent, which, if it, if it's not Pliskova, would be another one where she would be a huge favorite. So, yeah, these two women, I think, are especially happy about it. And, of course, Zhang and Martic, that, you know, that one of them will play for the Nets in the third round. Do you think Putin Seva can... I, I, I won't call it an upset because it's not in this, in this particular moment, but... Uh... Um, do you think that Putintseva can can end Pliskova's run? Absolutely. I mean, Putintseva has, uh, on many occasions in the past, been a, a tough matchup for players who can't really keep the ball inside into in play for you know for for a longer while. And of course, Pliskova in, in this form is is not really uh, that that keen on doing that. She would she would rather just come out and. Uh, you know, blast her opponent into oblivion, which she honestly could do. This is still a pretty fast court, and I think the weapons should be enough. But yeah, I would not be sh shocked with either result, really. Uh, Putin Seva is definitely a bit of a nightmare to play sometimes. Andre Rublev and uh, Davidic Fakina both have Russian fathers who were boxers, according to Jane. Jane, by the way, uh, has also got a comment for you, Mario. If Tommy Paul bounces back, She's blaming you. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, I will be sorry. <laughs> no problem. Just having a quick look at the draw that was being touched upon earlier. Um, the winner of Ribikina Collins. I mean, Collins's journey doesn't get any easier if she keeps going. She'll have to play uh, potentially Sviontek in the fourth round. I think I have them both playing in the fourth round in my bracket with Sviontek exacting revenge for her semi-final defeat last year. Uh, Ostapenko Goff is a potential fourth round. Lots of tennis to be played before. I would suggest both Ukrainians, Kostyuk and Kalina. Kalinina will go out to Pegula and Krajcikova. And that is a big, big fourth round for me. I have Krajcikova beating Pegula should that match occur. Probably I'm in the min minority there. Don't know. Uh, Azarenka, Sakari is a potential fourth round match. All popcorn matches, I would argue. But as was being touched on earlier, Volniets knocking out uh, Kudamatova has really opened things up for one or two players. On the men's side regarding some fourth round potential matches, uh, let's have a quick look now. Uh, McDonald Nishioka, you probably think Nishioka would get that done and he will play the winner of Hachinov Tiafo. I'm not so sure. No, no, I'm not so sure. It's 55-45. And the way McDonald played for almost two sets yesterday would suggest he's got a very, very good chance. Hercat Chapo will play. That's Things are a bit tricky for Medvedev now after what I think was a fairly easy first two rounds. Probably not going to get any easier from now onwards because Corder followed by potentially Hercat or Chapo. Uh, I think, Damien, you have Chapo winning that one, right? No, I actually had Hurkacz winning that one, okay. but him losing to Medvedev then. I think uh, it, it's very close between Hurkacz and Shapovalov, though. I was I was also thinking about this match earlier earlier today. Um, you know, the courts definitely sweet the Canadian more, but in general, I like the matchup for Hurkacz. He's leading the head-to-head three-one, and I think that's not not you know not not a coincidence. Um, Shapovalov can struggle against like good defenders. We can often criticize Hurkacz for being too passive, but in this matchup, it often works. And it's something that he feels super comfortable with. Although I'm just afraid that the court will be a bit fast. But if the court is, fa is, is fast, then, you know, the, the serve also gets a boost. And this is a very good pattern for him, you know, serving to the backhand return of Denis Shapovalov, which is, um, I don't want to say uh, a bad word, but, you know, it is a weakness. Listen, Brooksby could easily beat Kasper Ruud today. I don't think this is, this, this is probably 60-40 in Ruud's favor. I, I say that as Brooksby puts a return into the tram line. 
But this is a tricky second round for Casper. I do think overall his draw is pretty kind, with the exception of this match, probably, in terms of where we're at in the tournament. And uh, I think I get had Rude going out to Berrettini in the quarters, but of course that won't be happening now. So instead it'll be Andy Murray who he's going out to, uh, because we all know Murray's on the way to winning finally his first Australian Open title, despite losing five... Uh, as finals in the past. And, and then getting to the French Open final and winning a, car a career grand slam. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. I don't even know why we bother here commentating and talking about it because we already know what's going to happen. That'll And then retire, I would imagine, um, maybe with a third uh, Wimbledon title, but that'll be less important perhaps by that stage. And then he wouldn't go for the US Open event? <laughs> <laughs> Calendar <laughs> slam. Calendar well, slam. then it never stops. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. He's just beaten Matteo Berrettini. He's in round two in Australia. And we're already talking about the chances of a gallon. Yeah, I said, did I not say he's in round two? Yes, uh, I think okay. I said it. No problem, no problem. Brooksby now has a second break point on the Casper Rude serve, return on the forehand. This time, though, he's very much in the rally, unlike the previous break point he had. Let's see how this pans out, because this could well be decisive in terms of the first set. They're exchanging backhands at the moment. Um... Yeah, we had a few, uh, one or two slices in there from Casper Rude. Sometimes I think he uses it a bit too often. Anyway, uh, forehand now, Casper Rude. Something else I've said about Casper Rude in the past is I do think he struggles to turn defense into attack, and he's not really doing so right now. Casper Rude, although he's about to probably prove me wrong. Well done, Brooksby, though, but it's not enough to win the point. Defense from Casper Rude. You can see why Casper Rude was involved in a 50 shot rally with Hachinov. Um, Oh, and he's gone long there as he tries to mix things up. Maybe he was listening to my comments in his ear <laughs> about trying to turn defense into attack, quite possibly distracting the Norwegian. Apologies Finally, for that. we have started again here Go on. Uh, after some, something like uh, 10, 12 minutes break. Uh, we have just started again in this Davidovich Fokina Paul match uh, with the fourth, fourth set. So uh, Jane is not particularly impressed by Rusevoit's shirt. Uh, I don't know what that looks like or, or why, but um, maybe you can elaborate in the live chat because I don't have that match on. Um, Sitsipas Greeks ball should be comfortable for the Greek, in my opinion. Uh, equally, I would say Sinner is the favourite, obviously, against Fucevic. Inform Lehechka. He no longer is named Lehechka. He is called Inform Lehechka. Um, did pretty well pre-tournament. I think that's why I had him down as in, in form. I forget where he was winning uh, a few matches at Adelaide. Yeah, they, they played... United uh, Cup. United Cup and Adelaide, yeah. They played recently Auckland. in Auckland. Auckland. Okay. Um, they played recently, Leic Canori, in yeah. Auckland. Yeah, yeah, it was a very, very close close battle, yeah. Who won? Uh, Nori. 6-4, no, 6-7, six, 6-3. Four, six, yeah. yeah, but uh, Leic as well got a good win over Zverev, I remember, the United Cup, among others. And Felix will play his first seed in the tournament so far, Sarondolo. I would imagine Felix will prevail, but he hasn't. He has made heavy weather of it. He, already, he dropped a, a set in the first round, two in the second, of course, being two sets to love down. Dan Evans, of course, is also into round three, and I think from the men's side today, he's the only. Oh no, uh, yeah, Dan Evans is he the only person through so far uh, today on the men's side? I think so. All other men's matches are undecided. Yeah, while uh, Contavet and Lynette is on their way. Uh, they've just started their match. Ah, oh, okay, Janie, I see what you mean. Yeah, JJ Wolf is out in front over Diego Schwartzman uh, on um, on. Um, you're not a fan of JJ Wolf, Damien? No, I was vomiting. At, I was vomiting at Brooksby Root. Uh, oh, okay. Mind. No, JJ Wolf, I'm a huge fan. Actually. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, yeah, he's just so fun to watch, actually, and um, always wanted him to get to the main tour. Uh, because it just seemed like, you know, uh, whenever he gets there, he was going to be a tough matchup for the top seeds. And, you know, with, with, this, with this sort of an explosive game, I think you only really need a couple of good runs a year to, to stay there. So I think he, he will stick around. Mario, tell us something about David Fakina. And, uh... Yeah, Tommy Paul had a comfortable first... First game on serve. Uh, now Davidovich Fokina is serving, and, and so yeah, it's okay. Fifteen thirty. So uh, Tommy Paul is trying to to put in some pressure after having lost the, the third set. Um, so let's see how it can turn turns out this this fourth set. Um, 
Yeah, my prediction at the beginning was Tommy Paul in five. Mm, not so safe right now, but still well, possible. Yeah. Four live matches to talk about. I um, mean, there's plenty more as well, with Brooksby already a breakup on Casper uh, Rude. Uh, Contivate has won her first game against Lynette uh, there, so she's up one love. And elsewhere, we have Shelton and Jarry on serve as they reach the business end of the first set. Davis and Mertens are two games all. Rublev is serving for the set against Rusevoy, although he is facing a break point as we speak. And Schwartzman is down a break against JJ Wolf. I do have to say that in the in the few games between Brooksby and Root that we saw, Brooksby was just so effective in keeping him in the backhand corner, especially in that long rally. You know, only only really going to the forehand when he can, you know, get an advantage out of it and and stretch him to that side. Uh, it, it, the court also looked super slow. I wonder if that's just Root and Brooksby making it like that or. Or, you know, uh, I, I was just talking, I guess, about the Hurkacz Shapovalov matchup and, and mentioned that the speed of the courts can be a factor for Shapovalov, the advantage for him. But if, if it looks like in the Root Brooks B match, then I think Hurkacz has a good chance just driving and you know, grinding him down. But it could be Root and Brooks B just, just making it look like that. Mm, to be honest, I find uh, the court uh, a bit slow since the beginning of the tournament. Yeah. Um, when I was watching the Nadal Draper match, I found the court really slow. Uh, at least it's lower than previous years. Uh, now Paul has a break to love in the fourth set. Paul is uh, up a break. Um, yeah, I think that the. Uh, if the courts are really slower than than usual, uh, Brooksby can take an advantage in in the matchup against Casper uh, Ruud, uh, who I think that on hard court, I think that Casper Ruud is a uh, uh, far better player when the courts are uh, are fast. I think. Okay. Contavi held in the first game. Mm. I'm I'm interesting to see how Contavate looks like to to be honest because uh, lately she played some good matches then she struggled a bit uh, I'm I'm I I'm not sure about her for this Australian Open I was just wondering about Root you know uh, why would he be better on hard courts when it's faster than when it's slower like I just I just you know wonder if, if there's like any specific reason about that. Uh, something that comes to mind sort of is his backhand maybe not, you know, big, being a bit of a weakness when it's slower because it's not getting that much depth and just sits up for the opponent. That, 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 that was sort of makes sense, makes sense, I think. And yeah, Contavit has played two matches in 2022 before the Australian Open, 2023, sorry, uh, and lost both of them, but they were again really good opposition, right? Yeah, so also not, not really confident that, that Lynette can actually make the upset. Their head to head is close. As I said, it's it's seven matches. I think four three. I can't even remember towards whom. Maybe Contavate. Uh But um, yeah, and and the first round match of Contavate didn't really tell us much. She just had an opponent that wasn't really uh, you know, at this level. Uh, but yeah, Alinette has made a lot of slam upsets in the past two years. Vitolina, Barty, uh, Chaper. Of course, Barty was via retirement, but. She was playing very well until in that match, sort of like a Maki Nadal, where uh, McDonald was uh, was playing well. But of course, we will remember it as a match where Nadal was injured, and the same the same thing was with Barty, Lynette, and the French. Indeed, uh, Ghosty, they're saying, why do they stick ADF and Paul out on the chub court? Well, good question. Not sure, but I guess. They probably wanted to give some of the women a bit of the limelight. I'm not sure where Sabalenka played in her first round, so perhaps they felt as though... Also one of the showcases, I think. But in general, it has to be two women's, uh, one male, one men's on the day session, right, of the showcase. So so that's that's the reason why I've been watching a lot, a lot more women's matches. Well, of course, that's related to their length. Make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Get in a super chat as well. We've now Jensen got that. Jensen Brooksby has taken the first set. Jensen Brooksby's got the first set, has he? He's nice. Got the first set. And uh, I have to expose myself and say that I am a big fan of Jensen Brooksby's tennis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just because it's so different, really, and unique and different. I have to say that uh, I usually like these players who hit the ball in a different way than usual. Uh, I like players who slice us a lot. Uh, okay. who are really flat also. I like flat tennis. 
so so far, I have to say that I, I am enjoying the fact that the ball uh, has uh, has not this high bounce uh, because I I don't like so much where I where I see this uh, um, moon balls. I I want to say boom balls, but uh, this the um, these shots with a high higher uh, top spin, and I prefer something more. Um, I don't know, but it's it's just uh, just a matter of taste, not sure. uh, not a, a technical uh, a technical. Uh, so we can't advice. call you we can't call you Moonball Mario then if you're not a fan of Moonballs. You, you're ambivalent on Moonballs. I just it like the literal... for example. I have to say that my my um, the part of the season I prefer is the clay season my, in my May. Day, yeah. Uh, it's it's the part of the season I enjoy the most because I really really like tennis on clay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit strange. It depends also on the tournament and the situation, the moment of the year, and how I uh, how I'm feeling. Uh, yeah, so I I can change my taste really quickly, to be honest. So go on, Damien. Yeah, I was just wondering. Uh, so if you if you like Jensen Brooksby, did you enjoy Florian Meyer? Uh, because well, when Brooksby, I remember when Brooksby was coming around, they that that was like the comparison that people mm -hmm. tried to make, and there, there is some similarities in how they they, they hit their backhand, especially. Here, um, by the way, <laughs> we are engaged in a in another really tight game between Paul and Davidovich Fokina, and Davidovich Fokina is trying to break back, uh, and he has a break point. So uh, <laughs> it's really really unpredictable how this match is is going, and uh, it's also difficult to say how the next game will look like. But with an ace, Paul has saved this break point and. And now we are uh, at the third third views of this uh, never-ending game. <laughs> never-ending. By the way, the the about the uh, Dunlop balls again. I mean, if if they're really as impactful as they seem, then the the, the Bruce B. Root matchup is also it's also going to be quite important, right? With Root stops in forehand, not doing that much damage, and and sort of just falling into into Bruce B. strike zone. So that that could be that could be an issue as well. Uh, even if Root eventually gets to gets to play a forehand, which <laughs> of course uh, Brooksby has been trying trying to stop him from as as much as he can, yeah. So far in the in the in that match, uh, Root is hitting about forty percent of his ground strokes of the forehand side. Three love, Paul held his serve, so we are three games to love. I think I may well go to bed if that goes to a fifth set and then uh, just wait till that ends and then well, we'll talk about it anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay uh, Davis... JJ Wolf is in verge of taking the first set okay. really quickly. Very quickly. Yeah, but he's got it. 6 1. Yeah, yeah 6 1. Um, okay. Rublev has won his set equally quickly, really, against uh, Rusevoy, or actually a little bit longer it took him. But we have what... also Lauren Davis against Elise Mertens. Mm -hmm. On serve, 3 all. Mm -hmm. Anything else to tell us about? About the match? Any other matches? Uh, mm, female matches are just two matches. Charlie uh, Shelton on serve, five yeah, on serve, and Russo Wari held uh, in the first game of the second set. So he's trying to uh, to build uh, more fight. Uh, yeah, uh, first set went uh, went pretty quickly in Rublev's way because he he was since the beginning to uh, double breaks up, and so yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven singles matches at the moment, as far as I can see. Davidic Fakina, Tommy Paul are into a fourth set. Uh, Shelton and Jarry are on the verge of a tie break, but that doesn't mean Jarry has to hold. Wolf has won the first set against Schwartzman. Rublev has done the same against Rusevoy. Davis and Mertens on serve, as are Contave and Lynette. And Brooksby has taken the first set against Kasper Ruud, but Ruud has a break point. What's on your screen there in front of you, Damien? Uh, Shot and Jerry for now. Uh, yeah, we'll see the we'll see if the if the Chilean can uh, get it to a tiebreak. Although he has just double faulted, but yeah, I, I actually don't think this match will be that watchable. Though <laughs> uh, we we had a couple of breaks to start the set, but uh, you know, once once they tuned in a bit, once they start found the rhythm, it's it's gonna be hard for either to break. Maybe Shelton can come up with some amazing returns and. And sort of try to try to steer it his way, but 
uh, yeah, that that's probably not the most watchable match. I am very interested though in the in the result of it. What about Schwartzman? Maybe uh, Schwartzman against JJ Wolf. Is that a match that interests you? Or he's gonna get killed, I think. <laughs> and that, that's what Jeffro, even though you know the biggest fan of Diego Schwartzman. But he has planet. got a soft spot for Wolf too. Um, I guess, but of course, you know, he, he has this whole storyline of him, Bias, and Diego Schwartzman being like the same height, and <laughs> uh, you know, it's 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 nice, it's it's fun, and he is like the biggest Diego Schwartzman fan on the planet, and even he says that there's no chance, and I agree. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Diego is just in, in in this sort of form where where I think Schwartzman has a very good, I mean, Wolf has a very good chance to just override overrun him, but you know it. If Schwartzman was speaking, then it would have been a different discussion. But of course, yeah, right now it's just some very rough patch for the Argentinian. I wonder if he'll ever be back to his prime because that I don't think kind of so. yeah that kind of looks unlikely at this point in time. He did have a very good couple of years though. Yeah, not not his prime, but. Uh, uh... Definitely, I think that he can at least find just a little bit more form than than these days. Uh, even because I remember that he started quite well the 2022 season. Uh, he had a lot of good results on clay. I remember uh, Buenos Aires finally he took a set off from from Rude, and then he was in the Rio final. He was really close to beat Tsitsipas in Monte Carlo. Um, yeah. Yeah. so yeah not a not a bad uh, a bad start of the season for him and but then then you we all know what happened yeah it was like around that loss to uh giron in rome i think yeah in rome. yeah that was around the, the time where it all just went to straight to you know where um <laughs> I, th I think it was a loss to marcos giron yeah that, yeah, that yeah. was quite so shocking so yeah Exactly. That that was quite shocking on clay on clay for uh, him, right? Um, I don't remember. That's why I'm pulling up his records. I mean, he, what he did? He did but, quite well, right? Oh yeah, he yeah, uh, but ah, job, yeah, but he wasn't already like he wasn't already playing too well. Uh, I remember that match against Munar, and it was just a straight up. You know, Munar was Munar was much better, but he went up went up to sets to love and completely choked. Uh, but, but yeah, that was around the time when everything started going poorly for him. He, of course, crashed Dimitrov, a, a very poor version of Dimitrov in the French Open uh, round three. Then had no chance with Djokovic, which is a terrible matchup. But of course, we're not, we aren't gonna, we aren't expecting him to do anything on grass. But but yeah, post Wimbledon, it was it was simply really rough. Pretty much any event he played. Um, yeah, Karen, losing to Karenio Busta in Bosch that six one six love. Wow. That's that's quite uh, scary as well. Uh, yeah, I, I also don't think he'll be back realistically to like the top ten or or whatever. But uh, certainly has a chance of still improving his form because right now he's like borderline uh, top, not even a top top one hundred player probably when it comes to his level since since post Wimbledon. Yeah, here Paul. Had a, had a chance to fly to four love, but Davidovic Fukina held held his serve, and so we still only a break uh, between the two, uh, three one, and Paul is serving while uh, Lynette is uh, in a bit of a trouble against Contavet in this game. Um, Contavet is now pushing with her forehand, and she takes this point, so deuce in this fourth game between Contavet and Lynette. Um, I'm checking that uh, Rublev and Russo Wari are still on serve in the second set. Do tennis players want muscle? I mean, I always thought Federer had the ideal tennis body and he was lean. Uh, any thoughts on that, Damien, in terms of we obviously got Fuchovic uh, and all that stuff going on at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily have to be very muscular, right? I think it just depends on whether it compromises your speed. And with yeah, Rafa, and it hasn't it, done it so. It can also Alcaraz compromise your touch, probably. Yeah. Uh, in a way, uh, I know it's a big thing in, in table tennis as well, like that, that you cannot really like put on a lot of muscle because then you won't have 
you know, your touch might be compromised. Uh, we mentioned uh, like a couple of days ago, I think you asked me a question about uh, Tomasz Wiktorowski and I was mentioning that uh, short period when uh, Radwańska was working with Navratilova and Navratilova was like trying to make her go to the gym, but she, uh, <laughs> she disagreed. She didn't want to be, I know she didn't want any uh, to put on any more muscle because she was afraid of losing the, all her hand skills. So, so that, 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 that sort of ties in with this as well. Yeah, I think it's very individual. Some players yeah. clearly have, uh, clearly have, you know, uh, just the tendency to, to grow a lot of muscle like Nadal, like Fuchovic. Alcaraz, right, bulked mm -hmm. up so much and it didn't take away anything from his drop shots. It didn't take away anything basically from the, uh, the things he can do with the ball. He, it just added to his game and, and yeah. Uh, Feder, you say you're saying that Federer was lean. Yeah, he, he was definitely just a different body type. But then again, if you looked at his calves or something or thighs, they would they would still be you know muscular. Just they just probably wouldn't look at like Karatsev's. Karatsev, by the way, is a very good example of why you want why you might want muscle, right? The the calves, the way he's just has this very solid base on his legs is is insane. That's why he's so good at landing these. I know based on half volleys, like pretty much no one else on the tour can. He can just have a, such a solid, uh, you know, position when he's when he's setting up for a ball, thanks to thanks to all that muscle in his calves, which is which is incredible. Yeah, I, I agree. But uh, yeah, I think that um, every player uh, has to develop uh, his. Uh, um also according to the to the way you play your game style what what you need to do physically to play better according to your uh, your technical uh, technical qualities i think so um, yeah that's also why we we see a lot of tennis players and basically every tennis player has uh, his own um yeah his own physical physical state and his own uh, muscles uh, some tennis players are more muscular in the legs and some of them um, have developed uh, the the upper part of the of their body um yeah he here paul has just held by the way for one in the in the fourth set after another tight game uh, which went to use uh, so yeah this this match is becoming uh, an epic one and Contavit has to face a break point now after having some some chances on in the, the previous game now Lynette has a break point and Contavit makes the first set and the forehand was not so oh was wide this forehand so contemate is broken Lynette upper break three two in the first set yeah and Shelton took the only mini break in the tie break so far it was like a very long rally he managed to tear he managed to get get into back into the point and um Jerry just played a very loopy forehand into into you know, cross court into Shelton's forehand and he took it down the line I guess a little bit of a, uh, you know, something that would usually not be punished against a right-hander from from Jari, but because he played it to uh, to the lefty forehand of Shelton, he was just instantly shot down and and yeah, uh, shot down. He uh, it is five three for Shelton now, and he has one more uh, one more point on serve. You know, still still needs to be very clean because well, it's still one mini break, but uh, of course in a matchup like this, we're probably not going to get that much. Um, chances to break, and we're watching some highlights from Rublev vs. Warrior, which I'm assuming will be a great point since it's like a random uh, one-five rally. Oh, I mean, yeah, it was. It wasn't like the Evans love though that they showed us. So I want. So I wonder why this was chosen. They, they should just run it, run the lob again if, if they didn't have anything else. Now Shelton is kind of in trouble in a point on his serve, uh, defending a lot with the forehand slice. And Jari tried to play, play a uh, drop shot, but did not uh, cross the net. So yeah, a 17-shot rally. And Shelton was in trouble there, actually. But he, he does, it does kind of seem like in some of these important moments that uh, you know, the, the shot making of his compared to Jari's like, just blunt power can be 
uh, can be a big factor here. And he has three set points. Of course, at first, it's going to be two on the Chilean serve, but then we'll have uh, one on Ben's. Both uh, Iga Świątek and Hubert Hurkacz have made it to the third round already. If Magdalena joins them, we'll have a 100% success rate for Poles, since there are only three in this year's event. Uh, Kamil Markszak would have been there as well, but of course he has the doping case and Magdalena Frank did not pass through the qualifying. And Schotten takes the first set after 49 minutes. 7-6, 49 minutes, but yeah, that's what we expected from this match. <laughs> Yeah, here we are still engaged in the fight between Davidovic Fokina and Tommy Paul, as I was expecting. Um, now Davidovic Fokina is serving in an important game to try to... Oh, he's just fallen, as always. Uh, <laughs> um, 30-all, so uh, it's another tricky situation on Davidovic serve. Yeah, apparently nothing serious, even if... He... Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, um, I remember twisting an ankle like that. I think it was uh, a time when Queen Pair or some other French one, um, February 2021, I think. Uh, he, he just fell in, in, in a rally and, and twisted an ankle. So, yeah, he, he is very fragile indeed. And he misses the forehand. So Tommy Paul has a break point. He is already up a break, but now he has a break point. And Contavate is trying to break back, uh, to break back, and she's fifteen forty on Lynette serve, and so there are two break points for the Estonian. Let's see if Tommy Paul can can make this point. Davidovic second serve. And yeah, that's a, a good forehand. Uh, Paul uh, could have made more with the return, definitely, but Davidovic still manages to to hit an, a nice forehand cross court. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> another deuce. Uh, probably only one or two games in the last 12, 13 that went, not went to deuce, but okay. And Lynette has saved her first break point. There, are, there is a second break point for Contavate. Let's see, Lynette. The first serve is in. And that slice was not, uh, probably not so effective like she was hoping. Uh, she, uh, and so Contavate with a, with a nice backhand winner, three games all. So break and then uh, and an immediate break back uh, from a net count of it to, to level the score in the set. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's even hard to say like what that even was, right? Because that, that, that's like a half-cooked half drop shot attempt, I think. Um, perhaps he changed her mind, you know, playing that, but... Uh, it does give count of it, uh, it, it did give count of it an opportunity to break back. And she has 36% in that fantastic stat that we talked about yesterday, break right back, while Lynette only oh, has no. 27. So, but does that count as as a break right back as well? If yeah. I guess so, right? If Lynette would, but if if Lynette would break now, yeah, I think yes. I think it has to, right? But that would be three breaks in a row. So maybe yeah, they, yeah, they I should. Think that the, I think that the stat is just after you, uh, regardless of the yeah. score, after you get uh, you get broken. Uh, how many times you you managed to uh, to break again? So it would be a double break, right? But... <laughs> yeah, practically yes. Although it, it's not looking like me at present. Yeah, because Conta it is thirty love in this seventh game, while Tommy Paul is serving and just double faults, so fifteen all in. Uh, here we are in the seventh game too, but in, not in the first set, in the fourth set. They are killing themselves from from like three hours already. And yeah, and that's really an epic battle.
And there's a point for Lynette in that game. Uh, she she got a pretty decent return in this time. Shelton and Jerry are yeah, it's, it's getting more exciting now. Uh, ben in the previous point he lost it eventually, but he saved a couple of smashes. There was a very long rally. You can also see why Jerry beat Ketsmanovic. I mean, he's really uh, other than the first game, well, his first service game when he was broken, his ground game has been really on point. Uh, you know, even winning some longer rallies against against Ben. Uh, but he still has a game. Uh, he still has to take that game point now. It does seem like Ben could be getting a, maybe a better read on his serve now because he's he he is getting a lot of them back now. And Jerry Jerry is uh, you know, he went for too much on the forehand there, but that's also because how, of how uh, yeah, how solid uh, Ben was taking the the previous three or four that he sent at him. And Tommy Ball is 5-2 up in the fourth set. Contavate has, uh, well, Lynette will not break right back this time around. So it's 4-3 Contavate. Let me look at the other matches, maybe. Yeah, Brooksby and Rude are playing some extremely long games in the second set. Uh, Rublev and Rostovo are still on serve in the second. Schwartzman and Wolf are also on serve in the second. And Davis has dropped the first set to Elise Mertens. So maybe Elise Mertens is coming back to her Grand Slam round three making days. <laughs> of, of course, she, she lost that famous streak. Uh, was it Wimbledon or the US Open? Uh, where she lost that streak last year? Who's that, sorry? Elise Mertens. Uh, uh, because she had of, of always getting to a latter stage, you mean? Yeah, round three, she had like 18 or 19. I'm going to say US Open. I, I think could... it was the US Open as well, but I, I do have to check that. Because she was like saving match points in some events, and you know, it was... It she was saved a, a match. Story. I think she saved a match point against Muguruza as well in the last time. She certainly was, Muguruza was certainly serving for that anyway. Yeah, I, I think I think there was a, no. She was serving for it. Yes, but, but uh, double Andres faulted. No, Andres yeah. was, Andres was uh, the yeah. one who wasted yeah. the match point. Uh, yeah, uh, Mertens' streak uh, was uh, yeah was ousted at the U.S. Open when she lost to Irina Kamelia Begu in the second round uh, after making the fourth round at all previous slams in 2022. Davidovich Fakina is serving to stay in this fourth set, uh, two five down. So Tommy Paul seeking to uh, seal this fourth set and push us into a fifth. Lynette Contevate on serve. Uh, Shelton won the first set against Jerry. It's um, it's so weird with, this, with these download balls that we've been hearing about because <laughs> like Jerry, they shouldn't really be good for him. There's a reason why, even though he's a he's got a huge serve, he's always been best at clay. He likes it, of course, as a giant. He you know he loves it when the ball is higher, and then he plays you know off the ground. He's actually playing great tennis here, and and against Kitsmanovic as well. And then then we have a, a, so many matchups where it seems to make such a difference. So I, I really don't know what to think about it at this point. Indeed, uh, no, you can take this. Yeah. One. Yeah. Okay, so here this set can probably end in a few minutes because Tommy Ball is 5 2 up with a break. Davidovich now serving uh, to prolong this, this fourth set, and who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, it's, it's what happened to, to Tommy Ball, for example, in the, in the fourth set. He was uh, down a break and um, probably not looking so good. And then suddenly he, he forced the tie break, even if then Davidovich still, still took the set. Now 15-30, so Tommy Ball is two points away from win his, winning the, the fourth set. I think you're forgetting about one thing, though. Davidovich Fokina is done in this match, so... Oh, yes. Ah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, Sorry. By the way, he's not being seen or heard of since <laughs> uh, the betting king. <laughs> yeah, perhaps he's crying over the bet that he made on Tommy Paul to win in straights. <laughs> okay, so Linetti is in a... Yeah, she's uh, in trouble, and she's especially in trouble after this. Oh, this wasn't a double fault. Okay. so No, no, it was a long return. return. Oh, right. 
Yeah, but it, I don't really like the way this is going for Nunez. I mean, she's, she's just not standing up to Contavates in any way, right? And that just has full control over the proceedings. Yeah, and Contavates has, a chance, she will screw up. has a chance to, to get better than last year in Melbourne, because last year she, she lost in the second round. Clara Tosun? Yeah. yeah. Um, Such a shame yeah. that the, that that Tosin wasn't able to push on after after that win, right? That that seemed like a real breakthrough statement, whatever. Yeah, you're right. Um, Clara Tosin is yeah, he's struggling. He struggled physically last yeah. year a lot. She also she also won a uh, twenty five uh, k ATF yeah, title in Valle right? Adena. Yeah. Italy, yeah. Uh, now Paul is serving for the set, 5-3. Great and serve from Lynette, left. though, to, to save that break point. So let's see if Tommy Paul managed to hold. Probably yes, because he's 30 love, so... Uh, and it's already a news because 30 love, I've seen like two or three 30 love situation in the world match. Hmm. And that's a Im very important game in Contamate Lynette. Especially for Lynette, I would say. Yeah, uh, and another fantastic serve out wide, of course, this time on the EU side. And she gets... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, because it was, it was looking a bit like... Uh, at at the point, it was looking like uh, the Sabalenka Rogers first uh, first set. Mm, yeah, sure. Just because of how dominant Contavit yeah, is because... in the rallies, right? But um, yeah, if Magda can get like a few free points on serve per game, like with that. an ace, Tommy Paul held at love in this game, and so we are going to a deciding set between Davidovich, Fokina, and Tommy Paul. The least unexpected yeah, uh, exactly. deciding set ever, along with Davidovich Fokina Bublik in the opening round. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have just, you know, turned it on for the fifth. Yeah, I can, I can say finished. that probably uh, <laughs> Davidovich Fokina in fifth set. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, he's often uh, happens. Jack was yesterday matches. was giving us the stat on Mutei's Grand Slam matches, right? That only once I think he. Uh, one, only once or twice, I think he lost or won in in straights. So I think for Davidovich Fokina, it's it's very possible that it's similar. Casper Ruud is up a break in the second set against Jenson Brooksby. Um, Rublev and Rusovori are on serve for game sol, but Rublev has a break point, and also Kontavit. Kontavit has a break point now against Magdalinet. So let's see how this point goes. The first serve is out. Yeah, this time it's not in. So, so second serve for Magdalinette in this uh, in this tricky tricky situation, tricky point for her. And that's a good that a was good a fantastic second a serve. Fantastic yeah. second serve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was insane. Uh, placement, the kick, everything, and you can actually play a good kick with uh, with not one hundred fifty kilometers an hour. Katie Volinets, I'm yeah, looking at right. you. I'm not sure how, how fast that was, but probably, probably yeah, probably like a normal 140, 150, right? Rublev. Rublev has... 189? This... Uh... Okay, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, Andre Rublev will serve for the second set against Emil Rusuwari. 6 to 5 for up. Schwartzman and JJ Wolf are on serve. This time she double fought so on, on her second serve, so... It is uneven, and she is going for it. Okay, okay, so double fault from Magdalinette. And we have a third break point of this game. Contavent is trying to, to build an advantage for her. Uh, we are engaged into a rally, back end to back end. And uh, an amazing stuff. back end. Oh, yeah. Very, she very did good something back in a rally with Contevay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So three break points saved from Magdalinette in this game. She has been clutch in this one, that's for sure. Oh, I guess. Look, uh, look the close call. <laughs> yeah.
I'm looking at the Davidovich Fokina straight set matches at slams, and there's actually been a few of them. He lost to Schwartzman, Zverev, um, and I think Zverev is again uh, in straights, but also won four matches in straights, I think, against, well, Mayo maybe is not, not a quality win, but Kukushkin, Bolt, and um, Nishioka. Meanwhile, here the fifth set has started with Davidovich Fokina holding the serve. And so he's one love up in the deciding set. Oh, wow. This time Contavate with some magic. Very sharp angle on that backhand winner. I'm going to check that Mutais that Jack was talking about with us <laughs> about yesterday because I think it was something crazy. Like, I think it was, uh, yeah more uh, wild than Davidovich Fokinas. Mm, probably, yes. Best of five record. Lynette is trying to hold. Now she has another game point in this game. Uh, more than eight minutes, uh, the game duration. Uh, so it can be really, really important for both players. Not an ace, the ball was out. So second serve, Contavate with her foot inside the court. Tries with a forehand. Forehand down the line and yeah, she forces Lynette's mistake and so Deuce, deuce number six of the game. It's actually not that, um, I think, I don't know, I can't remember the exact time frame that Jack gave us, but there's been quite a lot of his, you know, easy losses like to Ojer Aliasim, Cilic, uh, all straight sets, Goffin. But he also was, he has also beaten a lot of players free and free love, Ivo Karlovic, Iji Vesely. Uh, he also lost to Badena, like got totally slapped. Wow, that's weird. Um, there, there was also something. Well, last year, I guess, I guess he was other than the Nadal loss, of course. Mm. Everything went four or five. Another break point, Jesus. Such a long and important game, but who? Oh. <laughs> this time the serve was like twice the twice the service box. Out. Yeah, I think Contavate is kind of you know, just yeah. taking taking the advantage in all of these rallies basically a little too easily. Uh, it's not looking great for the Paul who just lost a ten minute and five second game. Yeah, Contavate is looking better than I was expecting to be honest. Uh, she's playing. Uh, she's playing a nice match so far. Um, while Tommy Paul is forty thirty, and he has a game point to hold and to go one. Yeah, he held. So one game all in the fifth set. Looks like Jensen Brooksby might soon take uh, Casper Ruud to like thirty percent for hands in the, in the rally, but it, it it doesn't mean you know. In the second set so far, it's it's actually Ruud who has the upper hand who. Uh, has a break point currently at two, two, two all or whatever. Yeah, Rublev is serving for the second set, but he's facing a break point and saved the break point. So, deuce. Uh, three break points saved so far by Andrei Rublev in this game. He was 15 40 down. Looks like not much has happened so far in the in the doubles events. The, all the favorites are basically progressing quite safely. At um, least the, at what's least the, the score in uh, Krejcikova Sinyakova are playing? Krejcikova Sinyakova, I will tell you in a second. Uh, oh, it's a third set between Krejcikova Sinyakova oh, okay. and Akeri Harris. Okay, they that? they went unbeaten in slams last yeah, year. Yeah, that's good. That's gonna be something. They played three of them or something like that, or two of them. Uh, and, uh, they played three because in Roland Garros, uh, 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 Krejcikova got uh, got COVID, and they yeah. pulled out all the right, event. All right. Yeah, and or they and they won uh, Australian Open, Wimbledon, and US Open. Yeah. And now Contavate has three set points. For a love in this game, three set points. Here, a nice dry volley 
to win this this third point of the game let's see how this point goes a good first serve and Lynette not able to return so Contamit took the first set 6-3 winning the last four games of this set she was down break and but then she she broke twice in a row and took the first set 6-3 after 42 minutes Robloff took the second set Schwartzman Wolf still on serve in the second set so not not that easy for JJ anymore um yeah um, uh, okay, Chico Vashinyakova losing to a Kerry Harrison. That would be quite the upset. Probably comparable to Volinets. Actually, bigger, I think, than Volinets. Kudermetova. I think the odds generally don't seem to be that crazy in doubles. Uh, no, it's just the third set starting up. But, you know, just the fact that they lost the set, I think it's is already quite... Uh, oh, you're talking about doubles. Yeah, yeah Chico yeah. Vashinyakova and a Kerry Harrison. I think Kretiko oh, just happened? won the last three slams in a row. Uh, they, they I have Davidovich oh. Fokina on the f on the ground, uh, <laughs> uh, but he seems struggling now, uh, or maybe not. Uh, I'm just trying to understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, seems ready to serve, but uh, not looking great. But let's see in these two or three points. Uh, now he has to face a break point against Tommy Paul in the third game. We are 30 40. Yeah, Krejciko Vashinyakova went 18 and 0 in, the, mm -hmm. uh, in Grand Slam since 2022, dropping six sets. What happened again? There's another. Oh, that's an issue with the net. <laughs> and the chair empire is trying to fix the problem. Okay, we are ready to start again. Well, here the second set is underway between Contavet and Lynette. Lynette taking the first point. Okay, now we are ready. There was an issue with the net. The net was was like flying because it was not uh, was not caught to to the ground anymore. Second serve from for Davidovic, and that's a nice second serve. But uh, Paul ready to return pretty well. Davidovic has an advantage in this rally and closes it with a good forehand. So, deuce. Elise Mertens took the first set against Lauren Davis, 6-4, so probably we, she can begin another 58, the third round streak. <laughs> In Grand Slams, probably, who knows? Was Davis a qualifier in Auckland? I don't think so, right? I think she was in the main draw, so... so yeah, she lost in she lost in the first match. No, I mean, in, in Hobart, I mean. Not, not ah, Hobart. Hobart, yeah, sorry. Was she a qualifier? I don't think so, right? So, so she's currently on a six-match win streak along with the title. Um, I've got something that uh, I hadn't realized until now. I think we've got something to rival Tennis Sangren in terms of tennis-related names, which is Volinets. Volinets, yeah, yeah. I hadn't, yeah, yeah I've yeah. heard it a billion times. Already. Oh, okay. I, I hadn't uh, picked up on it. I think I was mispronouncing her name, even calling her Volniets. Yeah. Um, I think it's like Volniets as well. It's like, the, you know, how it would be in Ukrainian or whatever. The, I think it's of Ukrainian origin. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to dip out again. That's, that's all I had to say. <laughs> okay, we are still using this game between Paula and Davidovich Fokina. Now, Davidovich Fokina has. Oh, there is a close call. The ball was in. And so there's a break point for Tommy Paul. Oh, that's a, another very tentative eruption from that. Okay, so another break point for Contavate. Yeah. To win her fifth straight game. It would be three breaks in a row for her. 
Davidovich Fokina misses the first serve. And it's trying with a back and down the line now. And the forehand goes long. So Tommy Paul has a break in the fifth set. 2 1 with a break for him. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. so we have a break. Kontev uh, just dropped, played an even worse drop shot than the net did a second ago. I think only nets ended in, in, in the net. <laughs> On that in the net, and uh, well, uh, Lynette just had the whole court wide open and netted the backhand. It was on the run, but it did it didn't need to be like if, if she wanted, she could have really just uh, slowed it down a fair bit. Jerry saved saved some rate yeah, points. Yeah, I think four already. Mm -hmm. It was long three forty. Of, yes, three of them were consecutive. Okay. JJ Wolf broke, so he's gonna serve up 6 1 5 4. Yeah, I, I don't really see Wolf losing to Zverev either, honestly. I mean, he would need, yeah, to... for the way Zverev is playing, yeah, I, uh, I'm the same. I'm the same, yeah. He would need to s just you know r improve extremely rapidly, mm -hmm. yeah, even because uh, today probably it's Zverev has, yeah. It, I mean, um, for the way he played against Varias, uh, uh, I would can be calling be... an upset if not for the fact that Mo was so you know uh, engaged in such a long battle with Locoli and really yeah, yeah. on a tennis level, like he shouldn't be. Uh, Locoli is a guy he should be clearing up fairly easily, I think. So he was. He... Hmm? Oh no, it was the opposite. Yeah, it, it was. It was the opposite. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he luckily had a match point in yeah, the, yeah, in the yeah. third set and and Mo, Mo came back, but I don't know. That that was what disappointed me. Otherwise, yeah, I, I think I would be saying that Mo has a great chance there. Oh, Conta it with a great back end, a great cross court back end. Yeah, and Jerry held that game. So still uh, not two breaks in this uh, in this match so far. Hmm. Still, still what? Uh, two breaks in this match. Yeah, the the opening two uh, okay. games were were dropped. Yeah, it cannot. They they exchanged breaks at the at the very beginning of the match, and that's it. Rublev plus Wari on serve in the third set, but Rublev looks uh, really close to to set the third round clash against Daniel Evans. Against which he he had uh, some issues yeah, in he had 2022. Some with him. Yeah. Uh, I remember Madrid was really close and Rub uh, and Cincinnati um, in Canada. Sorry, in Canada, Evans won the match against uh, Daniel uh, against Andre Rublev. Yeah, it is a tricky match for Rublev, yeah, for sure. Yeah, also for for the way Evans can can mix the things a little bit for yeah, uh, for uh, such uh, a well a pretty basic player still. I, I I'm not I don't want to you know quote Stefano Tsitsipas uh, with the little tools that he or what was the yeah, quote yeah. exactly yeah something like that with a few tools sorry little would be with uh, uncountable things uh, with the few tools that that Rublev <laughs> has which is you know somewhat true of course there are a lot more basic players uh, some players yeah like we had uh, I don't know uh, so Lynette can can end her five games losing streak. Yeah, and then she would have a chance to end her uh, free game, uh, free breaks uh, losing streak. Yeah. Contavit sort of. has already had a double fault in this game. And she does not do it again, though. But she misses the backhand, so. Okay, it so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a break, it's a break right back. <laughs> Yeah, it is a break rate back indeed. Uh, Lynette's uh, break rate back percentage has gone up. We'll see if Contavate can also produce in that sort of scenario. Paul held this game, so he's three one up in the in the deciding set. JG Wolf has two set points against Diego Schwartzman. ADF gets paid by the point, and that's why his matches always go to five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's plenty of players like that. I, I I 
honestly, I, I, I met a guy at um, at uh, at Challenger maybe last year. I don't know. I, anyway, we had a great time talking because he like knew a lot about lower rank players. And then we just mentioned something about Djokovic. And he was like 100% convinced that he is fixing matches. And that's why he's often dropping the opening set. Uh, and that was too much for me uh, in terms of conspiracy <laughs> theories. I just, uh, I said, no, no, no. And yeah, we didn't argue or anything, but yeah, I do consider him an idiot because of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. Hello. <laughs> um, y y listen, I think if there is a plausible argument it is just, and I don't actually know plausible is a strong, too strong. If there is an argument that I would listen to, mm -hmm. it would be that he might drop a, a first set because he needs the match practice. Or, yeah, even that is a bit of a stretch. But it's certainly more plausible than, than him match fixing. Yeah, I mean, a, a, a guy, guy who's who has $100 million yeah, in the bank. Money to buy anything yeah. he wants, basically, and then never has to work again. Yeah, that's just not happening. But I, I do find it a bit of a stretch, but I, I certainly don't think playing three sets during the period that he did it in about April, May last year, that certainly didn't do him any harm, I felt, in terms of preparation. Oh, for yes, the so, sometimes it helps you, of course, but yeah. I doubt there was a match where he did that intentionally. No, know? no, that's true. Like, yeah, in, the, in, in most of them, he just wasn't really, uh, he wouldn't be safe against uh, someone. Like he would, re you know, imagine how... Uh, confident that you can beat someone you have to beat to do that, right? <laughs> yeah. He just kept losing the first set, basically. Um, I think particularly in Serbia. Yeah, also... in Belgrade, he, he lost the first set against everyone, right? Yeah. But I mean, against Jerry, for example, was it Jerry that the match that was 2 6, 7 6, 7 6? Yeah. yeah it, it's not like he, he dropped it on purpose. He, could, he can't have known. But yeah, some, some players can, can, can often look like that, especially when they have some focus issues like Davidovich Fokina. Okay, Tommy Paul is leading 3-2, so um, the momentum is certainly with the American, but, but who knows, this is five sets, as I don't think any of us are surprised by. No, <laughs> we were saying uh, right before that... Uh, yeah, it's, it's zero surprise that we are in a fifth set right now. Um, Tommy Paul still has a break. And now imagine Davidovich Fokina against Brooksby or Ruth. Again, it's, fi it's five sets. It has five sets written all over it. And Tommy Paul, honestly, mm. with Brooksby or Ruth the same. I don't know. In my opinion, um, for... for for a matter of um, of the way they play, I think that's Davidovich Fokina. Uh -huh. I know that they met in Roland Garros and Davidovich Fokina won, but it was different. I think that uh, Davidovich Fokina is less able than Brooksby and Paul to to create damage to Rude, in my opinion. Not a, not even on a on a court like that. Mm. You know, for the way he's playing today, I I think not. Mm -hmm. Even because um, uh, I think that uh, uh, at least in terms of concentration and um, stay focused, the uh, Casper Ruud is uh, a bit better than Tommy Paul. Uh, mm -hmm. So he can he can create damage, but he needs to be more consistent. So you're saying he probably wouldn't get to five sets with Casper Ruud. Mm, no, I think that if Casper Ruud manages to to beat Jensen Brooksby, and it, it would be difficult on this court uh, for the way the ball bounces and all this stuff. I then think that um, probably Davidovich Fokina is better for Ruud than Tommy Paul. Mm. Yeah, I think I, I would probably agree with that. But as I said a couple of days ago, I am a bit of a... Um... Oh, I constantly underestimate Davidovich Fukina. Don't really see the, um, yeah, don't 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 understand what appeal. Well, I understand what appeals to people in terms of liking his game. I don't understand what appeals to some thinking that he has some untapped, unlimited potential that we haven't yet seen. Uh, but but yeah. no, I don't think so. In fact, I do like the. Uh, I do understand, of course, why people like watching his matches because well, he 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 does bring the inter entertainment. Although I think in a lot of cases it's like you know not really tennis related, right? It's you know it's the way he 
he behaves, the, 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 the falls. So now there's a, there's a little chance for Davidovich Fokina because he's 15.30 on Paul's serve, 30 all now, but <laughs> he looks annoyed because understandable. He's understandably annoyed because he missed uh, not so difficult backhand. Uh, 30 all, by the way, so the little chance is still there. Yeah, at this stage of the match, uh, a backhand he wasn't really, uh, been yeah. really trying to do anything with, just put it, put it back into play. Yeah. Now he has an advantage of this rallying. Yes, yes. So we have a break point. He can Broke break back. Edits, Netflix. <laughs> Anytime someone says break points, I'm now <laughs> instantly thinking of that show. And now anytime someone says on the line, I'm also instantly thinking <laughs> of a certain show. I wonder if that show is going to do a special Veronika Kudermetova rest in peace episode. I think we will for sure ask him if he joins the, the Kokinakis Mari stream. And that's it with a great forehand. Davidovich Fokina breaks back. Three games all in this fifth set. Elise Mertens has two match points against Lauren Davis. And Lynette. Lynette is trying to push Kontavit. 15.30 on Kontavit's serve. Yeah, Shotton still can't break through Jari. He's been the better player in the past half an hour for sure. Had that had that one break uh, game when he say when he had to, well Jari had to save a couple of, uh, like five or four break points. But oh, it's, it's out! It's enough. out! Fifteen forty. Yeah. It still hasn't been enough to break to let him break through. And uh, yeah, Kontavit, if you if you guys remember, started the set with a break, uh, but then let Linet back into the mud, back back into the back into it with um, a bit of a sloppy couple of points, but. Since then, the pole has, you know, managed to take some confidence out of it, and is actually uh, trying to be more aggressive in her court positioning now and try to put at least any pressure in front of it. But that's okay. Just wanted to say that that's that, that's a very uh, passive forehand, but that doesn't matter. Contavate tries to go for something and she misses, so it's free one up for Lynette. Understandably, the Estonian is not happy about it. The okay, highest so, so Elise Mertens won her match against Lauren Davis. She's back in the Australian Open third round. She's been semi-finalist in 2018 Australian Open, oh, right. losing to Wozniacki. And she'll play Sabalenka in the third round. That was uh, Halep Kerber, right, in the other semi? Halep that, Kerber, that, yeah. That phenomenal. An epic semi-final. Yeah. And also the final was pretty good. I oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think was, Halep uh, was like the slight favorite. Most people were, were thinking she would win. And, uh, yeah, but uh, at match. the end of the day, she won the French Open. So probably it's fair that uh, Wozniacki <laughs> won. No, won I mean... Slam. Yeah, of no, course. yeah, yeah, I know. Before the match, I was thinking too. I remember that Halep could have been a slight favorite for yeah, that after match. Yeah, that semi. Wozniacki was also saving too much points in the second round against Diana Fett. 5 1, 15 40 down, I believe. Yeah, but the only player who managed to save match point in the first round and then winning the title Kerber? is Angelic Kerber, yeah, yeah, against Misaki Doi. Yeah, 2000. Uh, Kerber is the only one in, able to, to save match point in the round one and then end up winning the tournament. I yeah. That was... I in two years ago in round three. Before, I think it was. Oh, for, probably three, I think. Uh, I oh, would, it was before, no, no. I think, at 20, uh, you were talking about, not... 2021. Ah, 2021. No, it was round four, I think. 
uh, against no, Muguruza was round certain. four. I'm 100% certain, yeah. We can make a bet. Ah, okay, uh, no, because I remember another uh, another sound. Maybe it was Sunday day, yeah. I have no clue which day it was. Actually, I, I remember what I was doing. Um, a friend came over and we were drinking. And I still put on the match because it was, you know, so good. <laughs> and I was I was watching that uh, pretty drunk, but yeah, I, I did watch it. Uh, but that doesn't tell me which day it was. It, it could have been literally, literally any day. Yeah, if we are talking about the Osaka Muguruza, that was around four. Yeah, around four. Maybe you were thinking about Anisimova Osaka last uh, last year or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but Kerber yeah, that, that, that was uh, that was the year when Kerber then beat uh, Serena in the final at the, of the Australian Open. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately uh, Wozniacki definitely deserved one uh, in her career. You know, she finished two years at number one. That, that's very rare to do that and never get a Grand Slam. How many Grand Slams did Wozniacki win? Just, one. Just the one. 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 Yeah. If it wasn't for the final, she probably wouldn't would have never gotten one. And that was all after saving too much points from one five fifteen forty down against the Anafet in the second round. So Tommy Paul broke again. Ah. Yeah, four three now. Uh, Tommy break, Paul. Break uh, yeah. <laughs> Even if yeah, you know. And now he's up a break against Davidovich Fokina, like he was at the beginning of the set. But now he's only two games away from winning this match. Gotta say, it's a very weird uh, match. The, the, you know, the, 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 the one we have on the big screen, Lynette Kontavit. Mm -hmm. I mean, 6 3 one, one love up, Kontavit was just cruising. Uh, probably playing one of her best matches in a while, and then she drops the next four games in a row. But I guess that's kind of why she's, uh, yeah, why she, why, why she's declined by now compared to her absolutely absurd, uh, you know, one year more or less. Yeah, with uh, with Tosuno. Yeah, she, between with... August and then then until like what? Yeah, yeah. The, the spring maybe of two thousand twenty-two. She was I remember the, the San Petersburg, the San Petersburg yeah. run when she she beat Maria Sakkari in the final. She was two five down in the yeah in the February final for sure. She was still uh, she was still winning everything. Yeah, yeah, in, especially indoors. Yeah, yeah even if she she uh, she had a, um, uh, an underwhelming Australian Open campaign. Yeah, I mean, one, one loss um, can happen, right? Yeah, yeah, but I I remember that before that tournament, given how the uh, the year. Uh, and it, uh, everyone was like, mm, Contavate can can make a good oh, yeah. run in this Australian Open, and and then she, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, she was one uh, of the both, favorites. For, both her and uh, both her and Muguruza, we, who were the finalists of the WTA yeah, finals, WTA uh, went out in the second round. Yeah, who did Muguruza lose, lose to? Um, I do not remember that much though. No, I have to check because I remember Thousand really well. Yeah, Thousand, Thousand, uh, I watched it for sure. Who is really close to going through on the men's side right now? Mm. All Dan Evans, anyone else? Uh, Andre, Andre, Andre Rublev, Rublev and uh, Diego, uh, JG Wolf. Are they both injured with third? Uh, oh, she lost to Italy. Yes, but uh, Cornet. Uh, but uh, Rusevori is leading in the third, so not really, not really close. Uh -huh. And Wolf is on serve in the third. Uh, other than that, we've got Davidovich Fokina Paul. Where, well, I guess Paul is two two games away, so that's pretty close. Brooks Birut are at five five in the third in the third in the second set. Uh, Shelton Jari probably soon to be uh, five five in the second set, although Jari is two points away from the set, and that's it. From what's going on, I can check as well how uh, our friends Krejčíkova and Shinyukov are doing, mm -hmm. they and they're up for for two with a game point for five two. So they will probably be all right. Maybe they lost the set to you know give themselves more time on the court. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Kontavit held, uh, so the the four games losing streak is ended for here. While uh, here, 
Davidovich Fokines just missed the forehand for a few millimeters, I have to say. And Tommy Paul is 30-15 up in this very important game to try to take the 5-3 lead in this final set. I wish he had this uh, viewing figures for streams like the Challenger Tour streaming has. Like it, It's so cool to know that I'm currently one of the 45 people that are watching uh, Artur Kazo and Jakub Menschik in Montaburi. Yeah, that's <laughs> Although it doesn't take into consideration gambling streams, right? So it's it's a, you know, the number is always uh, a little underestimated, yeah, a little skewed. But um, it, it, it's hard to say like what's the percentage actually, right? But there are definitely a lot of people who watch it on gambling uh, websites. Uh, probably just you know it seems simpler for them than even turning on the official resource. So here we have two game points, no one because Davidovic Fukina has taken this rally. So 40 30 in this game, in this I have to say crucial game, because if Tommy Paul wins this point, then he's only one game away from the win. There are windy conditions today. I I see people's hair struggling. <laughs> <laughs> and no, uh, another point won by Davidovich Fokina. So 40 all. <laughs> yeah, he would lose While it. While Contavate is trying to put some pressure on Lynette. 15 30 in this game. That's another <laughs> awesome serve. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't get out. Of, she doesn't get that much out of it in the long run. Although she does push. Yeah, yeah. It fairly wide and to her the break side. point <laughs> in this Paul Davidovich Fokina match. So now we we're gonna get the least unexpected uh, deciding set tiebreak after the least <laughs> <Probably>. unexpected deciding <laughs> set. Tommy Paul has already been up a break at the beginning of the set, but Davidovich Fukina broke back. Third break in a row. But Tommy Paul put the first serve in, and it was a, a nice first serve, so deuce. And Lynette has a chance, has a chance to, to hold. Yeah, this one a great this time a great one to punch, just taking a little more initiative than, than previously in this match and locking up that open court. Advantage Paul. Three hours and forty-two so far in this match. And Paul has another chance in this game. The first serve is in, and so 5-3. Tommy Paul is one game away from the Australian Open third round. It would be the second time after his 2020 campaign. And also Lynette. Lynette is 5-2 now. So we are probably close to a third set. Indeed, Davidovich Fokina 3-5 down, so he did not end up breaking, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might not get that deciding set tiebreaker. It would be a shame. Rus War is serving for the set against the Rublev, but Rublev is two sets to love up, so it it cannot be a big deal, but let's see. Davidovich Fokina is serving to stay in the match. And the backhand is long, so 15 all in this game. Oh, that was a, a great, a great return from Tommy Paul, a return winner. So 15-30, Tommy Paul is two points away 
He's two points away from and the match. Let me Jensen know if Jensen Brooks Brooks be, Brooks be, Yeah, yeah he's know. got a set point uh, in the second set. Yeah, this could be a really, a really good for him, I think. Yeah, especially especially against Ruud, it's, it's really it really limits uh, Casper's potential to do just you know do do much with the foreign top spin, which yeah, but probably given given how things are going, uh, uh, he can he can have a, a nice third round. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's not unwinnable at all. I can't remember what would have what would be later for him. Oh, six yeah. three seven five. Jensen Brooksby, two sets to love. Brooksby uh, has indeed taken that, yeah, with a backhand winner, apparently. While Davidovich Fokina has a, a game point. 43rd in this game. Let me quickly try to find the draw and. Yeah, Kantovic had to get that. Um, let me find the draw and see what what would happen after that because this yeah that, that by the by this point we can actually start thinking of you know like Paul or Brooksby uh, getting into uh, five four Davidovic Fokina held and so now Paul has to serve it out. Uh, this is the Mare Kokinakis hold Bautista good section. So yeah, there, there is a very serious chance for Brooksby or Bautista Good to even make the quarterfinals from this. Mm -hmm. Kokinakis as well. I don't know if Mare does Mare beat Kokinakis and Bautista Good in a row. Yeah, Bautista Good is a pretty rough matchup for Mare yeah. in recent times. Yeah, there was Doha match last year where he got yeah, but it's not smashed. Only right? I remember uh, uh, another one uh, yeah. which Mare lost. And there was the Australian Open, of course, when Mare sort of retired, right? Against him, <laughs> yeah, but that was a good match. That was that was a five. That was in, in five sets. I think uh, I remember the Doha match, of course. Yeah, where he just got completely smashed off the court. It was Bautista good winning so many short rallies. I remember it was. Uh, that was and the six fight, three yeah. six two in Basel. Oh, for Basel. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. Mare won the the first three meetings, uh, including the Shanghai Masters final in two thousand and sixteen. Yeah, but it was like very you know back in the day. So before before Metal Heap uh, is three love for Mare. After Metal Heap is three love for Bautista. Is two thousand nineteen after Metal Heap though? Uh, when did he have the the surgery? Maybe in twenty eighteen. Oh, okay. Because yeah, he did like retire. Uh, and another one in 2019. Yeah, because, yeah. So it's uh, before because, the... uh, yeah, because after the the Australian Open, he, yeah, he was, was that, like, okay, yeah. let's do this again. And there try. was that, far, that farewell, and then he returned yeah, to play doubles the, the, with the peak from the colleagues. <laughs> yeah. Everyone say bye, bye, goodbye. <laughs> yeah, and eventually it ended up looking kind of weird in hindsight, but. Okay, but yeah, there is a there is a very big chance they're opening up if Brooksby can take out Rude. Uh, we would have Brooksby, uh, probably Tommy Paul. Fifteen we'll love see. in this game, and then yeah, someone like Murray Kokinakis. Uh, this is a winner from Davidovich Fokino with his forehand, so fifteen all. This is a very very important game because after almost four hours and five sets. Tommy Paul is serving to close the match. Lynette is serving for the set, but she's love 30. Let's see what happens in this point, because we are engaging in a great rally. And uh, Davidovich Fokina passing shot, amazing, 15-30. Oh, great, great serve plus one from, from Lynette as well. No, not an easy ball. Rublev broke back. Was what he served for the set, okay. up 5-3, and Rublev broke back. And Schwarzman Wolf are on serve in the third set. There's some spam comments, by the way. Um, oh, you might want to look at them. Ah, yeah, you're right. It's a net. So. Oh, oh, what? Yeah. Another great shot this time back and down the line. Yeah, Linette has sort of eased her way into this match for sure. She she's feeling a lot more confident right now and actually, you know, fighting for uh that control over the points with uh, with Contavate, which gives her a fighting chance with, with Annette playing pretty well today. 
Yeah, while Tommy Paul is two points away from the win, 30 all. Just like Lynette, even if she's not yep. two points away from the win, but from winning the second set. And Contave does not. And uh, the, the lob is so. long, so Tommy Paul has a match point. Has so a match, match point, point against. Which could end our stream in a few yeah. minutes. <laughs> so. You know, uh, guys. So who if are you? Who are you cheering <laughs> for? <laughs> no, I, I don't mind extending no, that. To... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Even, I don't. I don't mind extending. We are close in any case. Yeah, and even even if you are, even if we are closing uh, the stream, I'm still gonna watch. I'm not going to bed. So, you know. So yeah. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, so yeah, I don't mind extending it to a fifth set anyway. So. Let's see this rally. That's good that from Davidovic. Yeah. And oh, the passing shot is yeah. good. Tommy Paul has won the match. 6 2, 2 6, 6 7, 6 3, 6 4. Tommy Paul is in the, the Australian Open third round for the second time in his career. And uh, we'll await Jensen Brooksby or Casper Rude if Rude manages to, um, to put on a comeback. Yeah, so if Brooksby wins, we would have Brooksby Paul, and then on Amazing. the other half of that section, I will definitely watch. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah for you. That's that that, that would be uh, very enjoyable viewing for me. Not so much. <laughs> uh, and then on the other half of that section, there would be Holt, um, Bautista, Good, Kokinakis, and Murray. So likely Bautista, Good against Kokinakis or Murray. Uh, which would be a phenomenal chance for either player. Maybe Bautista, Good. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I think I would love to see that. Uh, Bautista good getting one more great slam run, and then that's the section that would probably play. Yeah, Taylor even because uh, in Australia he usually plays plays some good tennis. So yeah, he, uh, he usually starts the year incredibly well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then falls off. Uh, in the uh, Forty-seven percent uh, of his top ten wins came in January. <laughs> oh, wow, it's insane stat. Yeah, he usually gets like a like a top ten win in Doha or something. Like that. Sorry, top ten. Win. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, title, a title in Doha or something like that, and then goes to go, goes on to the Eastern Open. Of course, Doha is now in another part of the season, but uh, you know, a couple of years ago that was um, that was the case a lot of the time. Let me see what's going on in that Shelton Jarry. Yeah, I think they are in the tiebreak. Yeah, another tiebreaker. I um, guess I'll. There's another. Uh, Shelton is already up a mini break, so I guess I'll rewind to see how he got it. If it was some another uh, brilliant forehand again, like in the opening set. Oh. Oh, in fact, it was just Jari missing a cedar. But Shelton is very happy about <laughs> it, clearly. Shelton, I think, though, will be like universal, universally loved, right? Like when he when he's when he becomes like that, like you know, almost top player. I think whenever these kids, yeah, play like that, plus plus have that energy, a lot of that sort of college like energy. I think this is uh, this is a very easy on the eye uh, guy to watch then. Uh, plus a great backhand cross court to find the four to lead in the tiebreaker, of course, with a mini break. Wolf is, a, is in a, a bit of a trouble in this game, but from lap 30, we are now. Yeah, that's just sick on. power. And Lynette. Lynette is now lap 30 on Contavate serve in this first game of the third set. Five to Shelton, still that one mini break, but Jari now needs to win the two points to the next two points to have any sort of a chance to uh, to win this tiebreaker. We are in a long rally here, and 
the net misses the back end, so 1530, Conservate is fighting to to try to not get broken. A pretty decent attempt though. I, I, I really like how you know Magda just um yeah slowly <laughs> found her feet in this match and is currently probably the, the, the like the more aggressive player in the in the past couple of games. Shelton gets another mini break and four set points to go to go to sets to load up on Nicolas Jari. Here Grusuwari held, but we are now on serve six five. But Rublev will serve to to try to force a tiebreak. Contivate oh, with yeah. a nice nice point, closing it with a a forehand down the line, thirty all. Yeah, that, that short angled cross court forehand earlier was something else. Yeah, that was the the shot that <laughs> yeah set really up, closed set up the, the closed the rally. Yeah. And Shelton has a set point on his own serve now, which he takes. Okay. Wide serve to, to the Jari backhand, and then he had a pretty clean uh, for Which section of the draw is that? Shelton is to play something winnable, I believe. Let me quickly check it out. Oh yeah, Fritz Popiri. That would be oh, something okay. for American fans. Yeah, yeah. Fritz or Fritz playing Shelton. And it's not impossible. Not so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this could like if, if Fritz was about to go out, then this whole quarter just, you know, blows wide open. Um this is this is the of course the root section where, where if, if if root goes out to Brooksby and then we'd have, you know, something like Wolf Zverev and let's say Shelton Fritz and or or, or Fritz loses to Popelin either. Or he loses to Shelton, and then we could have a quarterfinal like I don't know Shelton or Bautista Wolf Agut. against Bautista Good. I would love it. That's 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 me too. To be yeah. honest, <laughs> give me Shelton Bautista Good or Wolf Bautista Good in the major quarterfinal. It doesn't matter who plays Novak Djokovic in the semis anyway, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at first Taylor Fritz needs to needs to lose for this beautiful <laughs> thing to happen, and also Casper Ruud. No, oh, Casper Ruud might lose to uh, someone along the way. Yeah. With Fritz, is a little it's a little tougher, but it, it's really not an easy draw for Fritz. I think I should be sort of overestimating. I, I don't that. think I I have a. a um... My uh, Fritz has a great, great reputation in my mind, but I I can't see him as someone who can't lose uh, in mm -hmm. in in his slam parts. I I see him losing. Uh, I have in my semi final, but uh, uh, yeah, he needs more t a bit more time, like you know, regularly at the top level, getting to the second weeks of slams, you know, all, pretty much all the time. Well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, lost to lost no, to only one for the final. I mean, he, he only on. before last year he never had a second week at the slam. Yeah, yeah, only then, two second weeks. Then lost that since he passed five setter at the Australian Open in round four, and yeah, and lost that five setter against Nadal as well in at, at Wimbledon. And in a deciding set tiebreak, right? And before that, he had a crazy deciding yeah. set tiebreak record, like twenty and three, I think, uh, in his whole career. 12 and 3 on the main tour or something like that. Maybe 12 and 2, I don't know, something like that. Ugh. Wolf has the break. Yeah, Wolf will serve for the match. <laughs> Rublev has a game point. I've contaminated. Uh... Uh, that was an important hold for for her. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, because she was looking really in trouble after the second set, and, and saving that game has been really, really, really important. I think the next opponent for either is Alexandrova. So, you know, certainly doable. Yeah. 
Yeah, Conte and Alexandrova played uh, a great final in 2021. All right. Yeah, I think it was Moscow. And so we are in a tiebreak in the third set between Andriy Rublev and Emil Rusuvori, with Rublev, uh, who has won the first two sets. So he can close the match with this tiebreak, or uh, Rusuvori can can force a fourth set. Um. I wanted to say something about Alexandro, but I can't remember what. <laughs> oh, I, I, no, I wanted, to, uh, and I know what I wanted to say. Uh, Lynette has like a terrible record in Grand Slam round threes, I think, zero six or something like that. Um, she, whenever she got to round three, she's always losing. Oh, JJ won. He won? Yeah, I guess he won. Okay, so yeah. six one, six four, six four, JJ Wolf is in the third round and will await uh, Mo or Zverev. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Lynette has had six uh, Grand Slam round threes and always lost. Um, of course, she's now playing for a, for a round three, not, uh, not playing in a round three yet. Uh, yeah, sure. Wolf, Wolf just crashed Schwartzman, which means that uh, the conversation that we had a couple, well, yesterday, right, with Jeffro here, yeah. I think, we were actually both right. I'm happy about it because I, I, I definitely love myself, so love me some JJ Wolf. But uh, Jeffro probably isn't happy about being right <laughs> in this particular case. But what can you do? What a rough moment for Jeffro in general. Bias, Schwartzman team. Nadal. Nadal. Uh, uh, the, the, I, I have a friend who um, I think was a fan of uh, Berlok, Tipsarevich, and someone oh, else. I have a fan And then they Berlok. just yeah. Th then they just retired in like one year, basically. <laughs> so I, I remember asking him, "Who are you gonna watch now?" And you're, you're all three retired. Your three favorites just retired. <laughs> it's, it's time to retire, also for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perhaps. I can't remember who was the third guy. Berlok and Tipsarevich for sure. As soon as this tiebreak is done, we're done. Rublev, Rusuori. Okay, okay. Rusuori is up 4-1 uh, in the tiebreak. Uh, Rusuori has been after having zero chances in the first two sets. Uh, in this third set, he, he had plenty of chances to, to win this. Mm, now he has a mini break in the tiebreak. And Rublev needs to to save these two service points while Contavit and Lynette are fighting the hard way. Contavit oh. crashes that forehand. That and that's a nice forehand. No. No 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 it was out. It was out for just so four two. Yeah, but uh, Ru oh, <laughs> it oh, was wow. really close, really close. And it would have been a winner if he if he landed it. Yeah, Rublev put the defense into the net. Ah, okay. So practically yes. Okay. And uh, would have been five one. Uh, so yeah, Rublev got a bit lucky. I mean, uh, <laughs> Brooksby would disagree with me. Because if there's no luck in net courts, yeah, I mean, in theory, there's no luck <laughs> in whether you made a shot like that, right? I mean, everything is yeah. on your record, I guess, unless it's like windy or something. But then you should probably, you know, know of the wind. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But take uh, it I, into consideration. I, I'm thinking about Rublev, and in in that case, you just have to to pray to listen. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> basically. And, yeah. So yeah, I would say that Rusuvori oh. was not unlucky, but Rublev was a bit lucky. Oh yeah, right. I guess from from Rusuvori's side, there's no luck, but but the, the second mini break lucky. came anyway. So five to Rusuvori, uh, who can close the set because now he will serve twice. Linette has a break point, another one. She's breathing very heavily whenever there's like a pressure point or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's like a strategy to calm down her nerves. 6-2, uh, Rusuvori, four set points. Oh, 
Oh wow! Amazing, amazing, amazing rally from Magnet to one. Crazy how <laughs> it worked. Also, Wari and Ruble are, and that's it. Yeah. That's it. Seven two, and so Rus Wari took the tiebreak. Rublev is up two sets to one. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we have also Magdalinette. Oh, Brooksby is up a break. Oh, so, wow. yeah. Yeah, after the Australian Open, Rude will have his off season. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and probably. And probably that's also one of the reasons why probably he's not so so on. He, in, he's not so what? So on. Ah, so on. Okay. Um, yeah, in fact, he, he won't go to, to the South American place wing. He, no. As for what he said, I don't know if probably going out early uh, of the Australian Open can open a door, but... Uh, uh, According to his plan, he, he will work on his game. He's, uh, he can be very, very happy about his, his season anyway. And uh, uh, I think he, we will see yeah. him again in Indian Wells. There is a chance for the world number one, though, right? Yeah, but I, uh, I think that it's, it's not the probably... Yeah, he, he needed to reach the final. So it's not like if you lose in quarters on semis and you can you can get like in this a, event, no, yeah, yeah. You, event, he, yeah. It, it's just a second round. So the, the uh, where did he go to in the you know uh, what round did he reach at the Australian Open last year? Uh, he no, he didn't play. Yeah, he was injured. He was in. He turned his uh, his ankle just before his first round match in uh, twenty twenty one. He he went to the second week. Um, this was his most recent Australian Open performance, so not so bad. So, if you just tell us about the results from today, I'll put them on the screen. Okay, uh, Rude has uh, got the break, so now we are on serve in the third set between Brooksby and Rude. Uh, Rublev uh, is two sets to one up on Rusu Wari. On the women's side, Sabalenka Rogers, only X Kudmutova. Can you just tell us about those results and then we'll wrap up? Um, yeah, Sabalenka won pretty easily against Shelby Rogers, winning 11 uh, of the last 12 games, 6 3, 6 1. Kudermetova lost. Um, so she's the, the second, the top 10 player uh, to lose in the, in the women's draw after Kasatkina, and that was the same section of the draw. So it's. Uh, Pretty interesting now to see. Yeah. Lynette is up a break, 3-1 in the third set against Annette Kontaveit. Um, Alexandrova beat Taylor Townsend. Uh, Elise Mertens beat Lauren Davis. And so Elise Mertens will face Arina Sabalenka in the third round. Um, Georgie Schmidlova has just started with Georgie. Uh, Georgie has a break. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, Wolf beat Schwartzman in three sets. And Fritz Popperin has just started, as well as Kudla Humber. And Shelton is two sets to love up on Jarry. Yeah, Shelton is just it's just on serve in the third, and Brooksby, uh, Brooksby did not. Well, there was a break right back, uh, and Rude broke back. Mm -hmm. Are we wrapping up or are we? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I know a few more seconds, so no, no sure. worries, no worries. Just didn't know okay. if I should talk anymore. Well, um, in doubles uh, we had Babos Mladenovic winning, uh, one of the favorite teams. Also, Krejčíko Asiňákova. Also, from in the men's side, the favorites have practically won everyone. Mm, yeah, Granoyers, Zebajos won, Maktiv Pavic, Kolov Skupski. So, yeah, uh, that was as regards the doubles. And then the net count of it is in a big, big, big trouble because she's love 30 on her serve and down a break. Let's see, second seven, it's a double fault. Double fault, so love 
40, Magdalena has three straight break points and to take a double break in this in this third set. And that's a forehand winner, so 15-40. Contavit saved the first break point. There are another other two break points for, for Magdalinat. Let's see. This point, Contavit make the first serve. But Linette is very aggressive in this rally. Tries to Beautiful. hit the backhand and it's a winner. Magdalinette is playing really, really well. So 4-1, Linette has a double break in the third set. And that was she's... Lukas Kubat in the crowd, by the way, watching, <laughs> watching Linette. Yeah, so she's really, really close to a makeable third round against Ekaterina Alexandrova. Yep. And she hasn't had a shot at making a slam second week since Wimbledon 2021. Uh, and yeah, her lifetime record in this sort of in this round is zero six. So there is a huge chance, but she first needs to take this match, of course. But yeah, she's yeah, yeah. definitely been the better player for the past hour or so. So, um, yeah, and as we as we were talking about earlier, Contavit was basically um, cruising until six three, uh, one love with a break. Uh, but yeah, Lynette eased her way into this and started actually trying to wrestle that control over the basin rallies from Contavate, and this has made a whole lot of difference. Later today, there'll be Olga Rune against Maxim Cressy, not so easy, probably. Uh, I think Rune will win, but definitely I'm expecting a, a closer match than the one he played against Krajinovic. Mm. Oh yeah, with, with Cressy it's always going to be close, right? Yeah, it's going to be about the one or point, one point uh, here or there. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure Rune is winning. That honestly, like it, it's just so random, right? And mm -hmm. I guess in general, I think his returning works pretty well against certain players. I mean, I'm not sure if he's even faced any, but it should work. <laughs> he he can take it pretty close to the baseline, I think, and then yeah, go go low at the. Uh, you know, try try to keep it low for for the first volley of Cressy to be hard, but I don't know. Yeah, and we've, we've got Kubot again on the, on our screens. I also this guy in uh, this guy in the hat. I also know him, but because he's always driving around with double Polish doubles players, I think he's like their extra coach or something. Like that I don't know. I don't even know what his name is, but I keep seeing him, him in tournaments. And for love now, Lynette looks really really close to probably close this match. She she has three game points to consolidate her double break. The first serve is in. The return is really good from Contavit, but the backhand is amazing from Magdalinette. Amazing backhand winner down the line. So 5-1. Magdalinette is only one game away from winning this match. As regards the women's, after we have Fernandez Garcia, Karolina Pliskova against Yulia Putintseva, with both looking for a great chance, because the winner of this match can probably look uh, with a smile um, on, on on the draw. And in the night session, we'll we'll have Belinda Bencic against Claire Liu and uh, Ons Jabber against Marketa von Drusova, which will be interesting because we we have to see how Jabber is physically, because she said she's not uh, one hundred percent, and also because von Drusova is is a very good player, so it can be it can be really really close and. As has John predicted, there there can be an upset. Yeah, whatever she touches right now, she basically <laughs> just turns it into gold, like the uh, the medical king, which is nice. Rublev Not, another big broke. On the way. So Rublev is now yeah, up two sets to one, and the break in the fourth. So. 
is on his way to the third round. Yeah, shot and free two up in the third. Theoretically, he just three games away, but of course it's going to be hard to break the Jari serve since they exchanged breaks at the very beginning of the match. Nothing has been happening basically on return for either player. Although, yeah, I guess Shelton had that one game where when he actually had five break points. So uh, what am I talking about? But yeah, other than that. And Contamate now has two game points to at least make Lynette to serve for the match. Taylor Fritz and Popirin are on serve in the first set, as well as Kudla Umber. Contavit held, so Magdalinette is now up 5-2, and uh, she can basically serve twice for, for the match, because she has a double break need. Rublev 3 love up, so probably it's close to winning this match. There's also Irina Camellia Begu on court against Laura Sigmund, and she has already a break. Begu has started the, the year quite well. Oh, yeah. Um, she was uh, very good in fighting in the first round, coming back against the Mandlik. Yeah, and that semi final with Sabalenka and. Uh... Adelaide, was it? I keep mixing up these events. Auckland? Auckland. No, uh, Adelaide. Adelaide? Adelaide yeah. won. Uh, no, I mean, whenever uh, a certain, you, you know, whenever there's like a couple of events in the same part of the world. Yeah, you're right. I just told the, and it's even worse with challengers. I can, I can usually tell you in Europe, but when there's like South America, you know, and there's 10 <laughs> events in Argentina, then I'm not going to know whether it's... Uh, Concepcion is in Chile, but uh, never Chile, never mind. Uh, but yeah, or Asia, I keep mixing them up too, as too, and yeah, Australia is the same. No, no, no difference there. Contavit is trying to stay in the match. Love thirty only net sir. Yeah, hopefully there won't be any comeback attempt here. Not gonna lie, I am currently very biased. You want Lina to win that match, but she deserves it. I mean, for the past seven and a half, she's been absurdly good for her standards. I think. Ace, fifteen thirty. So she's now one point closer. Is it still Shelton who wants to love against Jai? Yeah. Yep. Big rally, they're hitting really hard. Contavit is trying to attack with a forehand. Now she'll go down the line. And great defense from Magdalinette, but oh, wow. now we have the winner from Contavit. Two break points, 15-40. So this match can be longer than we we were expecting some some minutes ago. Kontavit was really in trouble in the rallies, and now she hits a great backhand, and that's it. Five three. It's quite a marathon run from from Lynette there, but it wasn't enough anyway. Yeah, Fritz Popenin have already started as well in Kudla Umber. Not sure if I see Kudla pressuring Umber today. Uh, but Fritz Popenin, that could be good as well. Mm -hmm. 
is that on one of the show courts? I think it sh I guess it should be right, since it's uh, well, since it's a match involving an Australian. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are coming to the end of, uh, I hope I can be heard, I'm pretty sure I can, yeah. We're coming to the end of today's episode. Thank you for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like button, uh, and if you're new to the channel, also subscribe. Uh, I was kind of hoping that Contevet and Lynette may have been done, but they're not. But make sure you tune in again in a few hours from now. Uh, where we will be covering a little bit of Novak Djokovic for sure, but we will have a particular keen eye on uh, Thanasi Kokinakis against uh, Andy Murray, uh, where Mario, Damien will be here once again, and uh, Jack will be stopping by as well to give you uh, stuff on there. So just a reminder of some of the results from today, uh, or currently in action, we've got Rublev is two sets to one up. Shelton is up against Jarry. JJ Wolf has beaten Diego Schwartzman. Dan Evans is through in straight sets. On the women's side, Sabalenka and Mark Mertens are through, uh, whilst Volnietz causes the shock of the day, arguably, at least until now, beating Kudamatova in three sets. And as we speak, uh, Lynette and Contivate are into a third set. Uh, once again, I just want to remind you to make sure you click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, world, for stopping by. See you all again in a few hours for part two.